Hello friends, this is Fiction Domain. How are you all? So we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto was master of bloodline become greatest ninja. But before we start, if you want more stuff like this. Then be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if possible share this video with your friends. Now let's start the story. The six-year-old ran quickly through the streets of Konoha dodging between back alleys and hopping fences. He was doing anything he could to get away from the angry mob that chased him spewing out words such as demon spawn and monster. The boy Uzumaki Naruto silently cried as he ran away from his tormentors why do they chase me what did I do to deserve this he wondered as he ran. Tripping on a rock he mentally awaited his inevitable beating. He heard the villagers close in around him and a heavisit man walked forward, club in hand, ready to pound the innocent boy. Naruto cringed and awaited his cruel fate. But this was not to be. But no pain came Naruto raised his head to see a man in an anbu cloak and dog mask, holding the villager's club with one hand. The killer intent was seeping off the anbu, and it didn't take a genius to see that he was pissed. The anbu pushed the would-be attacker onto his, but in slowly approached Naruto with several villagers muttering curses to the anbu and boy, but the anbu took no notice of it. When he was within arm's reach of the boy he kneeled down and said Naruto Uzumaki, please come with me there is something I must show you. Dot. Naruto was confused but silently thanked Kami for sending a savior from the villagers' evil intentions, so he nodded slowly, not trusting his own voice enough to speak. The Anbu nodded and gently picked him up before jumping to the rooftop and proceeding to Konoha's forest. As they sped away Naruto's mind was abuzz with questions why do the villagers hate me so much what do they mean by demon spawn that would be human, a loud voice rang in Naruto's mind. Nearly jumping out of the Anbu's arms he mentally asked wwh. Who are you Naruto was considering running for the nearest mental clinic when the booming voice replied who am I, I am the great Kyubi no Kitsune or the nine-tailed demon fox and I am sealed inside you Uzumaki Naruto. Now I know you may have a lot of question, but I cannot answer them all now the answers you seek will be revealed when your bloodline awakens and you have been sufficiently trained in it. Naruto was absolutely stunned, he had a bloodline and he was the container of the most powerful demon in existence it was unreal. However Naruto's thoughts were interrupted when they reached a large clearing and the Anbu set him down. Uzumaki Naruto we Anbu have watched you closely and unlike most shinobi and civilians we don't hate you, we have also heard that you wish to be Hokage one day. We have been forbidden by the council to help you directly we can help you in secret, as soon as the Anbu said these words three more headed and masked Anbu appeared behind the dog masked Anbu and stood silently staring at Naruto behind the lifeless masks. Uzumaki Naruto you may not know it, but you are the sole survivor of a hidden and powerful bloodline, the last holder of this bloodline, whose name we are not at liberty to say, requested us to help you upon your sixth birthday to train you in your bloodline, and for the academy, the Anbu paused a bit before continuing. So before you ask questions we will train you in the basic and advanced shinobi arts, until you become a genin, from there your sensei will train you, and just maybe once you reach shunin, we'll invite you to Anbu if you're lucky. The same Naruto was excited would be an understatement he was ecstatic he had a bloodline, he was going to be trained by elite ninjas and would have a chance to become a powerful ninja, Naruto's thoughts were interrupted by the dog mask Anbu's voice. Where are my manners I haven't introduced myself my name is Soren, and my comrades behind me are Yugao, Yamato, and Kakashi, each of us I will train you in your bloodline as well as the basics, well Yugao will teach you to jutsu, Yamato will teach you jinjutsu, and Kakashi will teach you ninjutsu, and now we will begin. Yugao, Kakashi and Yamato left the field while Sorin walked into the middle of the training grounds while gesturing for Naruto to follow. Once in the middle of the field Sorin spoke, Naruto your bloodline revolves a lot around Kinjutsu, Fuinjutsu, and your bloodline allows you to share a mental bond with wolves, though you are not a member of the Inuzuka clan, you have a relationship with wolves like they with dogs. So I'm going to have an in-wolf partner instead of a dog like Kiba Naruto questioned. He liked the idea of the wolf partner, but it was a little too similar to Kiba's family. Sorin's reply was almost instant yes, Naruto you will though there will be some differences, first your ninwolf partner will be able to talk like a summon, and two his or her chakra will come from you. Dot. What do you mean by that? Naruto said quietly. Simple Naruto your ninwolf will draw chakra from you for jutsus and other stuff, which is why you'll need training, you already have an insane amount of chakra which will increase still with time, but for now I will teach you Kurimi, Bunshin, and Henge, as well as basic chakra control. Dot. Yada. Naruto yelled he was going to be a ninja and gain everyone's respect. Six hours later Naruto crawled back to the orphanage where he lived. Tired and exhausted from the Anbu's training Naruto used a basic hiding Jinjutsu Yamato taught him to slip up into his bunk and thought about his first day of training, Sorin had taught him the Henge Bunshin and Kurimi which Naruto did easily, as well as tree walking and shuriken and kunai throwing. 
Liu Gao had taught him basic tajutsu and the basics of the Uzumaki style kinjutsu, Yamato showed him how to manipulate chakra to create jinjutsu, and Kakashi taught him a few basic wind jutsu, seeing as his affinity for wind, as well as his famous Senengarashi technique, which Naruto couldn't wait to try on unsuspecting shinobi and villagers. The villagers Naruto thought they had mistreated him for the Kaiubi, who had decided to wait until he was much older before he continued interacting with each other. But now Naruto finally understood it all the glares the beatings the scorn all of it was because they thought he was the Kaiubi. He had been harassed on the way here because some villagers had thought he had stolen some clothes from the shinobi store. Sarin had bought him a new outfit. It was a black shirt with small orange stripes on it and a kanji for wolf on the back and some black shorts that went to his knees with to side pockets for kunai, shuriken and other things. He had ditched his old orange jumpsuit after Sorin told him that it practically screamed kill me. Along with the clothes he had been given a set of kunai and shuriken, along with ninja wire which he hid under a floorboard by his bunk so that the caretakers wouldn't see, as well as some books and scrolls on history and tactics, as well as one or two for entertainment reading purposes. He hid those as well because the caretakers seemed to take anything he got and either burn it or give it to another boy or girl in the orphanage. They hated him they turned a blind eye when he was picked on and actively did their best to keep anyone from adopting him. So Naruto took it all and waited until he became old enough to leave or was kicked out, the latter of which was more likely though. Being as tired as he was Naruto drifted off to sleep until it was time to train the next day. Naruto awoke in his bunk and slipped out of bed before stretching and looking around the small room he shared with the other boys in the orphanage. Seeing no one he pulled out the floorboard and began reading a scroll called Uzumaki clan history and jutsus after reading the first page he came to an interesting clan jutsu. Uzumaki family style nin wolf summoning. Summons a nin wolf partner from the wildlife jutsu range as 1200 km, summons a young demon wolf to you to act as your nin wolf partner. Seals. Dog, snake, horse, rabbit, wolf. Thought this looked like an interesting jutsu Naruto thought before pefferming the seals and calling out the jutsu. For a moment nothing happened, then in a flash of light there in front of him stood a wolf. The wolf had white fur and typical amber eyes he was the large, an think of Akamaru after the time skip, and had two tails swishing proudly behind him. The he hello tea there Naruto stuttered, he was terrified that this wolf might eat him. The wolf turned his eyes toward Naruto and smiled he 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 it's been a long time since one of the Uzumaki have summoned us, so tell me little one what is your name, do not be afraid I will not hurt you. No wolf will sense your clan and ours shares an unbreakable bond and will fight with you proudly until death. Naruto calmed down after hearing this and quickly brightened at the prospect of working with this wolf and becoming a strong ninja. My name is Uzumaki Naruto and I want to become a great ninja someday. Naruto beamed as he said this and gathered his kunai and shuriken and put them into the pouches on his outfit that Sorin bought him. Naruto huh? Well it will be interesting working with you, my name is Santon and I am your new nin wolf partner, from now on we are linked so that whenever we are in trouble the other will sense it and come to help. Now I figure by your age that you haven't mastered any other Uzumaki style jutsus or tojutsu, either am I right? Naruto just grinned sheepishly and nodded very well climb on my back and we will go to the forest for our training. Dot. Naruto grinned and grabbed the scroll before jumping onto Santon's back and yelling a resounding yada. To no one in particular. Santon just smiled again and jumped out of the window and hopped from roof to roof and into the forest. In another part of the village Siratobi stared out at the village he had sworn to protect and sighed, is it worth the paperwork he thought when he saw a white blur fly by jumping from roof to roof heading to the forest. Now normally in a village of shinobi this is a common, however what wasn't common is a wolf jumping from roof to roof, heading to the forest with two tails. Saratobi wasn't one to jump to conclusions, but when he recognized a little black blur on the wolf's back as Naruto, then he got concerned. Saratobi did the only thing that was prudent he summoned the clan heads and the anbu and got ready to rush into the forest after them. Naruto I hope you're safe. Back with Naruto and Santon. Santon took Naruto to a grove deep in the forest far secluded from anyone else and stopped to set him down. The grove was perfect for training, there were large boulders for practicing jutsu on and trees and a pond for chakra control and suetan jutsus. Naruto got off of Santon's back and unfurled the scroll till he got to tojutsu and read the title, Uzumaki style tojutsu. Wolf fist style. Naruto looked on in fascination at the sequences on the scroll, this style was unlike any he had ever seen. He was so engrossed he barely heard Santon speak, the wolf fist style relies on speed and agility, as well as quick, precise and thorough blows which specialize in quick and efficient takedowns. Naruto beamed again and quickly got into the stance the scroll showed him and went through the sequence over and over again. Santon made sure to correct Naruto's form and stance many times, though he soon started to get the hang of it and was receiving fewer and fewer corrections on his stance and it came more instinctive to his movement. 
After several hours of practice Anton called for him to stop and come over to him, Naruto nodded and walked to Santon, who was seated atop a boulder watching him practice, yes Santon what do you need? Dot. Santon sighed at the boy's excitement and shrugged before explaining, I am going to teach you a jutsu called, Yuzumaki style piercing wolf howl jutsu, much like your Kanashibiri no jutsu this jutsu lets the user let out piercing howl and freezes their opponent, now depending on how proficient you are with it will allow you to freeze certain opponents, probably no one higher than Chunin at first. The seals are bored dog bird monkey rabbit wolf, now get to it. Naruto nodded and ran off to perform the jutsu when Santon sensed several chakra signatures heading towards them, seems we'll have company soon, he thought as he watched Naruto attempt the jutsu again and again. Finally in a loud burst of chakra Naruto breathed out and let out a loud piercing howl that echoed across the forest. Santon jumped in shock at his display and then smirked, it looks like we have a prodigy on our hands here. In the forest not too far from Naruto Siratobi and the other clan heads stopped when they heard a howl echo across the forest and shivered as the wave of killing intent washed over them. They looked back and forth at each other, trying to figure out what happened before running in the direction of the howl. Naruto please be safe Siratobi thought as they neared the clearing. Naruto fell back on his butt, he had did it it took a couple of tries, but he did it successfully. Santin jumped down beside him and motioned to the forest where seven figures jumped out of the forest. Naruto took a fighting stance but lightened up when he recognized Siratobi. Heyo Siratobi Ajiji, an hope I did that right, what brings you here? Dot Siratobi and the others sweat dropped at this and were about to retort before Siratobi spoke up, Naruto where have you been and what's going on, we were worried sick. Naruto grinned before retelling the story from the beginning up until using the piercing howl jutsu, in the end the clan head's jaws had dropped, while Siratobi was smiling well Naruto, I'll have to fill out some paperwork for your new bloodline, but until then I'm going to move you into a house, since the orphanage probably won't accept Santon, the sandame tossed Naruto some keys before leaving with the rest of the clan heads. It was now almost dusk and Naruto finally remembered something, hey Santon, I got to go training with Sorin and the others we need to hurry. Santon nodded and waited for Naruto to hop onto his back before following Naruto's direction to the training grounds. Kanoha two years later a man stood outside of the Kanoha Ninja Academy with a large two-tailed white wolf beside him. The man was tall 5 feet 6 inches to be exact. He was covered in a red anbu style cloak which hid the ninja armor underneath his blonde hair, was combed into a ponytail that runs down to his shoulders, and his face had lost all baby fat, and was covered by a mask with the kanji for wolf on it, an think of Haku's mask. The man was actually an 8 years old Yuzumaki Naruto, with his faithful nin wolf partner Santon, he mentally smirked when he remembered the training regime Sarin Kakashi Yugao and Yamato put him through. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto had just arrived with Santon at the training grounds for his instruction from his Anbu friends, it had taken a lot of argument, but they finally got him to eat healthy foods instead of ramen. Now he was going to begin his training and was extremely anxious because Kakashi had said that Sorin was putting him on the two-year bodybuilder's guide for ninjas, which was written by a man named Mido Guy. However little did he know he was in for a world of pain. Hey Sorin sensei what's this new training you're going to give me huh, I bet it's really good for it to get top reviews, questioned the ecstatic little boy. Yes Naruto this training will help you and Santon greatly, for starters I want you to take 20 laps around the village, then 2000 sit-ups, 2000 push-ups, 2000 crunches, then 2000 kicks and punches to the training posts, followed by 1000 push-ups with a bag of sand on your back, the Anbu replied with a hint of sadistic glee in his voice. Naruto had mentally shut down on hearing that, and Santon had begun to nervously edge himself away from the insane Anbu. Well get to it. He yelled with a commanding voice. Hi the two replied before running to do as they were told. Well they ran the duo silently swore to prank their trainers for this regime, and the cramps they would surely get. After the course Naruto and Santon had to take two soldier pills to stay conscious when their senseis came to them again, and unanimously yelled now we'll get on with training as usual. A resounding what? could be heard all across the village as the duo went through their normal training with the Anbu. Then flashback no jutsu. Naruto inwardly shuddered at the thought of their gruesome regime. Naruto whistled at the size of the academy and thought back to when they had arrived at their new house. Santon however remained silent like Siratobi had told him to. Flashback no jutsu, again. Naruto gasped at the size of the house that old man Siratobi had given them. The house no castle had three levels with a kitchen filled with various foods and a hot spring and dojo in the rear of the castle, there were over a hundred rooms with a library with scroll upon scroll of jutsus from D-class to S-class, and books on history, strategy medicines and poisons. On the table was a scroll from Siratobi. Dear Naruto. 
I hope you like the new compound for you, since your bloodline is popped up this castle will act as your clan compound, if you're able to start a clan, in the library are books on politics, I suggest you read them since as clan head you will be required to know politics, so that you may survive any political encounters in the future. Also with your new bloodline, there will be clans that will try to set up arranged marriages to get your blood into their clan, watch out for the Inuzuka clan, as they will no doubt try to get your Ninwolf abilities into their clan. Don't worry though as any arranged marriage will have to wait until the age of 12, and as clan head you can accept or deny the request at your leisure. Good luck and farewell. P.S. Tell Santon to not speak in public so as to avoid any more complications. Naruto sat down to digest the information, while Santon thought of what it would be like for Naruto to run away from girls who would no doubt be after him. After Naruto digested the news he jumped up and shouted, come on Santon let's go study those jutsu scrolls. Santon smiled and ran after Naruto into the library. Hours later Naruto had found a room on the top floor and promptly plopped down and went to sleep with Santon curled up beside him. And flashback no jutsu. Naruto simply nodded to Santon before putting on the mask and pulling up the hood before walking into the classroom. Imi no Ruka sighed as he gestured for the class to quiet down and that another student would be joining them today. Looking at the scroll his eyes widened when he saw Yuzumaki Naruto, Haruka raised an eyebrow, this should be interesting he thought as he announced the student. The Inuzuka clan who as well as the other clans and parents who had came to see their children to school, shot their attention to the door when Aruka announced their new student and waved him in. Naruto and Santon walked into the room and got a wide set of thoughts from the room. W wo wow thought a certain Hyuga heiress, he's not all that tough looking even with a wolf thought a certain Achiha and a frowning pink haired girl, while the rest of the females stared with miniature hearts in their eyes and wondered what he must look like under the cloak and mask. However a certain Inuzuka boy was excited at the idea of another ninja like him, and, a certain small white dog gave an enthusiastic yip. Let's see now we have a brooder, an Aburam, Akamichi, a lazy Nara, who would have thought, a bossy Yamanaka, a shy Hyuga that's a new one, and an overconfident Ichiha with a fangirl problem, overall an interesting group. Hiruka motioned for Naruto to take a seat and get ready for the lesson. Nodding once Naruto sat in the far corner alone with Santa next to him by the seat. Throughout the lesson, which Naruto found he already knew, he noticed the curious stares he would get from the occasional student, parent or teacher, and found much to his delight, they weren't full of hate or disgust, but instead curiosity. One hour later Ruka filed out the students to the training field for kunai and shuriken training, once there they were greeted by Mizuki the physical instructor. Naruto didn't notice the disgusted sneer Mizuki sent him, but Santin did the ninwolf sent a spark of killer intent to the teacher, thoroughly silencing his stare. When the students lined up Mizuki went through showing the students proper shuriken and kunai handling and throwing, however he purposefully avoided looking at Naruto and treated him like he wasn't there, an act that didn't go unnoticed by the other students. Regardless Naruto still made marks that outclassed the other students, much to the contempt and frustration of Mizuki and Sasuke. When the time came for the tajutsu sparring Mizuki sneered at Naruto and announced the match as Yuzumaki Naruto vs Ichiha Sasuke. With an ever-confident smirk Sasuke strutted into the arena drowning out the cheering fangirls and awaited his opponent who he figured to be weak. Naruto grunted in acknowledgement and walked alone into the field. Ready to lose spoke a confident Sasuke as he slipped into the intercepting fist stance, common of the Achihas. We shall see, replied Naruto as he slipped into the wolf fist stance, with one leg spread forward and his hands crossed in front of him palms open. I lend this in one attack Sasuke stated as he ran forward and threw a punch at Naruto's face, only to have it blocked by Naruto's arm. Naruto saw the attack coming and raised his arm to block the punch and launched his palm forward hitting Sasuke on the chest and sending him back a few feet, Naruto followed up with another palm strike and a roundhouse kick to the face. Angry Sasuke got up and after performing a few hand seals and with a cry of Katen Hausenka, no jutsu launched several fireballs at Naruto. Backpedaling Naruto went through hand seals of his own and yelled wind-style great breakthrough jutsu before launching a blast of wind that knocked Sasuke back a few feet and sent him into a try unconscious. No one spoke for a moment before the sound of clapping and applause came from most of the male population, while cries of Sasuke-kun rang from the female group. Haruka applauded Naruto for his performance and dismissed class for the day. As Naruto began to leave when he noticed a horde of stares boring into the back of his head, turning he noticed much of the female class, as well as older women stare at him with nothing other than hunger, a loud of let's get him and see what's under that mask and cloak. Naruto took that as a sign to run and he did, with most of the women chasing after him and Santin yipping and running after him, leaving a pale-eyed Hyuga heiress blush and stutter before walking home. In the Hokage's office Eritobi smirked at what he saw through his crystal ball and thought Naruto you will be an interesting ninja. Ah, can Femke will be tied at fifth. 
these pairings are still open for voting till the 6th chapter, as for the weapon the voting is done, and Naruto's weapon will be a katana, I will give it a special property. Also I have decided to give Naruto a Tejutsu, but first can someone give me a name for it I was thinking based on its abilities, calling it the knowledge I this chapter, we'll get an introduction to some of the vixens hehe. <laughs> Four months after the beginning of the academy. Uzumaki Naruto sat in a creek near his home dressed in nothing other than his boxers, it was his way of calming and relaxing himself. The academy had been boring he excelled physically and did average academically. He knew much of it, but as his lazy friend Shikamaru would say, it was too troublesome to do it right, and it was, playing an average student kept the attention off of him mostly. On many occasions the female population had tried to demask him, they had all failed, but Naruto had to give them credit they were persistent. He had made friends with Hinata, Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino, slightly, Sasuke and Sakura had despised him ever since he had beaten Sasuke bad and occasionally picked fights with each other, Naruto's score was 20 wins to 12 losses, Shino had kept to himself. Now Kiba was a different story, he didn't hate Naruto. But they didn't get along either. Naruto chuckled as he remembered the incident. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto had just finished training in the forest with Santon and was running back to his home, ignoring the cold glares the villagers and some shinobi had given him. It seemed that even though he had a bloodline they still hated him. He pushed those thoughts behind and jumped to the roof, intending to get home faster when something hit him and sent him to the ground, his mask falling off as well. The something that had hit him or should I say someone landed on top of him and lips touched. Naruto's eyes widened considerably, as well as a deep crimson blush appeared on his face when he noticed whom he had for lack of a better term kissed. They're on top of him in a rather provocative position was Hana and Yuzuka, and note this isn't the pairing. Yet though I thought it would be interesting. Realizing the awkward position they were in they both quickly scrambled back a bit, upon retrieving his mask and returning it too, his face Naruto jumped off ignoring Santin's laughing. Then flashback. Ever since that incident Kiba and him had never gotten along, and Naruto swore he got murderous whenever Kiba even found him looking in Hana's general direction. So here he was meditating in a river, testing his endurance of the freezing water as well as patience. Santon was off in the forest chasing rabbits, though Naruto swore he caught the scent of a female wolf around the area, and Santon, he was starting to wonder what Santon did while he was away. Unbeknownst to him things were about to get hectic. At the park. Hanada, Ino, and Hana and Yuzuka were sitting contemplating ideas to get Naruto's mask off and see his face. I got it we'll get Shikamaru to use his shadow technique to catch him and reveal his mask, shouted a familiar blonde. But Ino he'll just use Kurimi to get away, then what questioned an equally familiar Hayuga girl, yeah I know she's more confident, but I blame that on her upbringing, and it was fixed when Naruto befriended her. Girls how about we just go to his house and confront him about it, added the Inuzuka girl. They agreed and ran to Naruto's home with one goal in mind. Upon arriving they entered the house and found it empty, Hana and Ino searched upstairs while Hinata went out back. A loud gasp was heard from downstairs, Hana and Ino rushed to where they heard the gasp. Upon arriving they all blushed scarlet and in Hana's case drooled, there sitting in a creek mask still on was Naruto and nothing other than his boxers. Na na Naruto, wow, 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 he's almost completely na no bad thoughts. Um six pack, well toned muscles sun blonde hair, one word hot. Must resist jumping him, but then again it would be easy, now all I have to do is stop drooling, if I can. Similar thoughts went through the girls as they continued blushing. Noticing their presence Naruto opened his eyes and upon noticing the girls and the state of dress he was in blushed, though you couldn't see it through his mask. Quickly the girls turned and ran away in a cloud of dust, leaving Naruto alone and confused. At this same moment Santin walked in and upon noticing his condition asked Naruto what happened to your dad. Naruto didn't answer he simply got up and walked away, but stopped remembering something hey Santon, why do you smell like female wolf. Santon didn't answer, Santon please don't tell me, please, it can't be true. Santon still said nothing, Naruto visibly paled at the Santon, did you do what I think you did with a female wolf, this time Santon nodded, making Naruto pale even more. Santon bring her here, and then we're going to see milliseconds. In Yuzuka to see if she's pregnant. Santon nodded again and sprinted into the forest. This isn't good, Santon might have pups to deal with, which will complicate things. Santon soon returned with a wolf around Santon's height, with snow white fur and three tails. Greetings, little one. My name is Akane, mate of Santon, your partner. Naruto nodded and headed up with Santon and Akane for the Inuzuka clan compound. Upon reaching the compound, Naruto ran past the barking dogs and shouting Kiba and quickly found Tsum. Sum san please we need your veterinary expertise this wolf might be pregnant and we need verification he yelled. Yes, right this way please Tsum led them into a white room with a lone table in the middle and several cabinets next to the wall and began her examination. 
Three hours later Tsum had finished her examination and turned to Naruto and Santin smiling well Santin is going to be a father in five months and based on Akane's condition, they will be healthy pups. Naruto smiled his foxy grin and Santin literally jumped in joy. Thanking Tsum Naruto told Santin to take Akane home and find relax while he left to inform Suratobi of the news. Tsum accompanied him saying that there was a council meeting about to start and she was needed. Arriving at the council chambers, Naruto noticed the occupants of the room. Hiashi Hayuga and Shibi Aburam kept their emotionless and calculating gazes, while the Inoshikachu trio had curious expressions, while Danzu Kateru and Hamura sneered, and the Sandame smiled Naruto what brings you here. Dot. Sorry for interrupting your meeting Sandame Jiji, but I thought I'd give you the news, Santin has found a three-tailed white wolf as his mate and are expecting pups in five months, the Hokage smiled and thanked him for informing him before continuing the meeting. Five months later. Naruto sat in the Anoha Veterinary Hospital waiting room along with Hana, Hinata, Ino, Choji, Shikamaru, and Santin, waited for Tsum to come out. Don't worry Santin a cane and your pups will be fine. Naruto had tried to comfort Santin for two hours, but he refused to stop pacing. Naruto was about ready to glue him to the floor when Tsum walked into the room sweating slightly. Mom how did it go questioned Hana, everyone crowded around Tsum awaiting the verdict. The pups are fine and healthy, perhaps the best litter I've ever delivered, and Santin you are now the proud father of five wolf pups. Everyone smiled while Santin jumped for joy and rushed in to see his mate and pups. He will be getting a katana, however I've thought of something original I think, I haven't seen it used anywhere else, so I'm not sure, but you'll have to find out later. It was a quiet morning in Kanahagakur, however one house in Kanoha was in an uproar. Uzumaki Naruto was frantically searching for his cloak and mask, but they were nowhere to be seen. He had torn his room to pieces without finding so much as a trace of his gear. Soft footsteps alerted him to the entrance of his ninwolf partner Santin, he looked the same as when they first met, except for the addition of a fourth tail, he watched Naruto for a minute for smirking in a cunning way. Naruto immediately glared at him. Guzo, Santin where the hell did you put my cloak and mask? Naruto it is time that you put them away, once you complete the exams you will be a genin, not an anbu people will get mistaken which will lead to confusion, and besides Naruto you have the skills, you could be anbu in no time at all. Naruto didn't say anything, he knew Santin was right on all accounts, but that didn't mean he had to discard everything. He quickly dressed himself in his ninja armor, think of Itachi's armor from the flashback in the show, to where you see him in the massacre, and put his now waist-length, sun-kissed hair into a ponytail to manage its eyes, afterwards he pulled a large cloak over him that went up to his nose before jumping out the window and heading for the academy with Santin close behind him. Along the way Naruto could feel the hate-filled glares the men shot at him, no matter how strong he got they never stopped, the women however were aiming him like a predator. Naruto started to sweat, all kinds of women from the age of 8 to 21, civilian and Kinoichi, were starting to converge around him. Naruto, now officially frightened, motioned to Santin and ran off to the bathhouses, intending on taking a shortcut, Santin this is your fault, if I had worn my cloak and mask this wouldn't have happened. Santin merely growled as they ran in the direction of the bathhouses. They and you know who's coming next. They soon arrived at the bathhouses panting and out of breath, having finally lost the women they were about to head to the academy when they heard giggling you know who this is. Turning around the corner he came upon an old white-haired man sat peeking into the women's bath area. Naruto sighed as he motioned for Santin to do anti-pervert technique number 45. Santin smirked before walking behind the old man and swiftly let out a wolf howl jutsu. The old pervert jumped out of his skin at the concentrated killer intent. Naruto stifled a chuckle as the man turned and glared at him. The man had white hair and a wrinkly face with two red marks on his cheeks. Oh Igaki you interrupted my research, who do you think you are? Dot. My name is Uzumaki Naruto head of the newly formed Uzumaki clan, and I will master my clan abilities and techniques before showing Kanoha who I am. Dot. So this is the kid that Arashi sealed Kaiubi into, hmm interesting. Well you old pervert I got to get to class for the genin exams, see you. Dot. After ditching the pervert Naruto ran to the academy, making it just in time for the bell. Sighing he opened the door and walked inside. A collective gasp followed as the whole class even Aruka gaped at the blonde. This is Naruto, he looks so handsome, and such a face, Sasu can wait, this blonde hunk comes first thought Yamanaka Ino as she drooled at the blonde. WWW wow 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 na Naruto kun you look awesome this came from a crimson red pale eyed Hayuga girl. Naruto is handsome, but he pales in comparison to Sasu kun thought Haruno Sakura. The rest of the class had varied reactions, mostly from the girls who stared at the blonde to a sneer from a certain Achiha brat. Naruto inwardly sighed at the display, but slowly walked up and took a seat next to Shikamaru and Choji who simply greeted him, or in Shikamaru's case, muttered his famous troublesome line, and went to sleep. 
The call from Aruka got everyone's attention as he motioned for the test to begin, OK today a class or the genin exams, the exams this year consist of correctly demonstrating the henge, kurimi, bunch and jutsus, as well as a jutsu you know can be used as extra credit, now first up Akamichi Choji dot. The test went by rather quick, Choji did it all right and performed the bike no jutsu, as well as meat tank technique, Shikamaru used the kajimana technique to trap Aruka, Kiba and Akamaru used Gatsuuga, while Hinata demonstrated Katen, Shino used a bug trapping technique, while Ino and Sakura didn't perform any techniques other than the basics. Naruto scowled at this, those two cared more about love than being a shinobi. When Sasuke was called he smirked before performing the Katen. Ryuka no jutsu, decimating a small amount of forest. Sasuke smirked before passing Naruto hey dope beat that dot. Naruto scowled again at the nickname, he was not dead last, that was Kiba, which was mostly due to how often he skipped class, but the emo team treated him as such boy was he going to be in for a surprise when it was his turn. Speaking of which. Uzumaki Naruto Aruka called, Naruto shrugged before walking down and standing in front of Aruka. Now Naruto Aruka said perform the said requirements, and you'll pass. Naruto smirked before using the henge to turn into Aruka, and using the Kurumi substituted with a rock. When it came time for the bunch and Sasuke smirked, he knew the buzz ninjutsu was Naruto's worst technique, what he wasn't expecting was the dobe's cry of cage bunshin, no jutsu ten solid Naruto's appeared. Outwardly Sasuke showed no emotion, but inwardly he was seething at the amount of power Naruto had. Naruto smirked when he looked at Aruka and his assistant Mizuki's shocked faces, they certainly weren't expecting that from an academy student. Nah, Haruka-sensei, Mizuki-sensei you should move back a bit while I perform one of my strongest techniques. Nodding they ran a distance back as Naruto performed hand seals for his jutsu, finishing he let out a cry of wind-style raging whirlwind gale jutsu, a rush of wind gathered around the area where Naruto was decimating the trees, training dummies and any other object there. When the wind stopped the ground was covered in craters, while the trees were shattered with cut marks all around. Naruto smirked walking past a stunned Aruka and grabbed a headband before walking out to the swing he usually sat at and watched as the other students greet their parents, with Santin at his side. Naruto envied the children since they had a family of their own. Hey, isn't that the da? Sh we aren't allowed to talk about that. I can't believe they let a thing like him pass as a shinobi, what were the teachers thinking? Naruto drowned out their words and went back home before dropping his headband onto his bed, before going to work on his special project. Walking into his basement he came upon a small blacksmithing room. Gingerly walking in he picked up a single katana that lay on a wooden table. It was a simple katana except for the kanji of Wolf and Yuzumaki clan inscribed on the hilt. This katana was not a normal katana, it was a chakra fang that he had forged himself, and it was a year ago that he discovered an ancient scroll, depicting the instructions on how to make such a weapon. All that was left was to infuse his blood and chakra into the blade, the blood was to make sure that no one else but one of his kin could touch the blade, while the chakra was to give it its unique property. Naruto walked to the blade and cut his thumb on it, before letting the blood drip onto the blade, while infusing it with his chakra. The blade only flared with chakra telling Naruto that it had worked, smiling he set the blade in its sheath before walking back upstairs to go to bed. Naruto passed Santin's room and smiled as he saw Santin and a cane curled up together, with their pups right next to them, it was these little things that kept him going in life. Plopping into bed Naruto drifted off to sleep. Naruto awoke and found himself in a sewer, with long winding tunnels and a cage directly behind him. Standing up he walked to the cage, but froze when he heard a resounding laugh filled the room, sending Naruto on guard. Haha <laughs> kid, don't you remember me I mean it's only been six years since we last talked, rang a powerful yet slightly feminine voice, you know what's next. Naruto's eyes widened in recognition as a woman roughly 21 by the appearance stepped into view from behind the cage, she had crimson red hair and eyes, with claws, ears, and a tail like a fox, or in other words, she was the exact incarnate of raw seductive beauty, and to make it worse, she was naked. Kaiubi put on some clothes woman Naruto turned away before she saw the blood drip from his nose. The Kaiubi laughed again before using henge for clothes kid I see you remember me, that's good I thought I would have to tell you all over again. Anyway you have graduated and like I said I've awakened again, and my oh my you have grown into the most handsome young man I've ever seen too bad I'm stuck in the seal, or else who knows what might have happened. Dot. Naruto blushed again and began to contemplate torture for the fox woman. Now Naruto think fast time for training without warning flame shot towards Naruto. He dodged and glared at the woman before dodging yet another flame blast. This went on for the rest of the night, with Kaiubi teaching him chakra control, as well as stamina and strength training. In the morning Naruto dragged himself out of bed before eating a quick breakfast, he then grabbed his chakra fang, while he and Santin ran out to the academy for team assignments. When Naruto arrived he quietly sat in the back of the room before Iruka gave an introduction and began calling out the teams. 
Naruto only half listened before he heard Iruka call out Team 7 will consist of Ichiha Sasuke, Inuzuka Kiba, and Haruno Sakura, your Jounin instructor will be had at Kakashi. Naruto perked at this, Kakashi got a seriously screwed up team. Team 10 Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Choji, and Nara Shikamaru. Naruto heard Ino whine, Choji just kept eating chips, and Shikamaru just muttered troublesome, while Sakura kept shouting about true love. And finally teammate Yuzumaki Naruto, Hai Uga Hinata and Aburam Shino. Naruto smiled, he had his friend Hinata as a teammate, even though he didn't know Shino that well, he knew they would get along fine. Yuzumaki Naruto watched the red-eyed woman who was to be their sensei, she was a little shorter than him and had her cold black hair left unruly, she was not interested at all in looking pretty, which was a blessing for Naruto, if he got a sensei with a vanity problem he would have screamed. She led Naruto and the others to a small dango shop not far from the academy, ushering them in and seating them before looking them over, all right, I am your sensei Yuhi Kurenai now before we begin I want introductions to which I'll start she paused before continuing my name is Yuhi Kurenai my likes are mastering new jinjutsu and protecting my friends. My dislikes are Kanoichi who care more about beauty than being a ninja, and my dreams for the future are to become the greatest jinjutsu specialist in the world. Shino was next to speak out among the three my name is Aburam Shino, my likes are discovering new types of bugs and adding them to my hive, my dislikes are people who hate bugs and I have no dreams for the future, after saying this Shino turned back to the menu, looking it over emotionlessly, as per his stoic self. Up next was Hinata my name is Hayuga Hinata and my likes are protecting those I love and getting stronger to protect them, my dislikes are those people who judge before getting to know others and people with dark ambitions and my dreams for the future are to make my clan happy and get Naruto-kun to notice me she thought blushing. Naruto inwardly smiled Hinata had turned out into a fine young woman. She no longer stuttered except when too much attention was on her or she was embarrassed and she was growing considerably in strength. Hinata was at the moment wearing simple Kanoichi ninja clothes with a fishnet shirt underneath, her indigo-colored hair had grown out and now reached to her lower back, all in all she had turned into a beautiful young woman, already several young men had tried to pick her up, but being in Yuzumaki, Naruto drove them off like the protective friend he was. Naruto didn't want to admit it, but he had somewhat of a crush on the young Hayuga girl. Bringing himself back to reality Naruto remembered it was his turn. My name is Yuzumaki Naruto, my likes are Fuinjutsu, Tujutsu, and Kinjutsu, and protecting my precious people, my dislikes are people who look down on others for things they have no control over, and my dreams for the future are to bring the Yuzumaki clan fame, as well as learn new types of Tujutsu styles. A little disappointed at being left out, Santin barked from his spot behind Naruto. Chuckling Naruto reached back and scratched Santin behind the ears, offering condolences for being left out. Kurenai looked between her students she had a pretty good team, but she wondered if they could pass her test. Standing she gestured for them to follow her to the street. Now listen up before you can be instated as Genin you must pass a test, now this test varies for each sensei, they have a 66 failure rate, now my test is a bit different, I am going to hide, and you three as a team will have to find and apprehend me, the test begins in 3. 2 1 begin. But that Kurenai flashed through some hand seals before disappearing in a flash of light, leaving three confused genins and one demon wolf behind. Aburam Shino was the first one of the four to speak up, she used a jinjutsu to escape however one of my bugs was planted on her before she left, so I can track her down fairly easy. The Aburam ninja stated before jumping off after Kurenai, nodding Naruto, Santin, and Hinata followed soon after. Shino led them to a deserted training area, complete with training posts, dummies, and a water source. Scowling Naruto told Santin to sniff out Kurenai's scent before drawing his chakra fang. Settling into the Yuzumaki advanced kenjutsu form he waited patiently for Kurenai to reveal herself. Shino's bugs were the first to discover Kurenai dispelling her jinjutsu he sent his bugs after her forcing her location. Kurenai swore before jumping away from the bugs, landing she went through some hand seals before shouting Suiten. So you would no jutsu out from the water rose a dragon before launching itself at Shino. The attack hit Shino before sending him into a nearby tree, grunting Shino turned into a log. Kurenai swore again before jumping out of range of Shino's kunai, landing she was forced on the defensive as Hinata attacked her mercilessly with her jaiwiken. Disengaging Hinata's attack Kurenai ducked down before hitting Hinata square on the chest, sending her back a few feet. Taking out a kunai she barely blocked a down slash from Naruto, pressing the blade forward Naruto twisted his foot to the side before sending a kick to Kurenai's body. Kurenai dropped her kunai before jumping to the side. Rolling she quickly got up and blocked a punch from Shino before punching him in the head and throwing him to the ground. Hinata sprang back up and attacked Kurenai along with Shino, Santin who had stayed hidden, sprang a Kurenai claw's extended jaw set to kill. Kurenai turned before Santin was on her he slashed her neck before she disappeared in a puff of smoke, replaced by a log. 
Guzo Naruto thought she wasn't easy, though she was a Jounin of course, so she wasn't to be underestimated, he may have to resort to that jutsu to win the fight. Naruto ran forward again flashing through hand seals he jumped up before shouting Futen. Rinkudan Kurenai was busy dodging Shino's bugs and was unable to get away in time. The force of the blast sent Kurenai flying into a nearby tree. Kurenai however was not done yet she got up and flashed through some hand seals demonic illusion, visions of hell. When she finished Naruto felt like he was on fire the world around him swirled and twisted as fire burned across the land, he was dizzy, and there was blood everywhere, and a lone man walked toward him, katana raised to kill. Knowing he had to escape the illusion Naruto flashed through some seals for one of the ultimate Uzumaki clan techniques, Uzumaki clan Jinjutsu full moon of the demon. The world was dispelled as a full white moon arose in the sky next to the sun. Naruto's features immediately began to change, his eyes turned amber, and his canines extended, his claws grew and sharpened as two wolf ears and tail appeared on his feature. Naruto quickly dispelled the Jinjutsus on Shino and Hinata before Kurenai could register his movement. Naruto jumped forward on the offensive and launched several fast strikes intending on disabling Kurenai. She blocked two attacks, but the third knocked her off balance. Naruto saw his chance and went through three more swift attacks and sent a swift kick to her abdomen, knocking her back a few feet. Naruto flashed through a few seals again, intent on finishing the fight. Ninja art. Chakra chains jutsu. Placing his hands on the ground, he pumped chakra towards Kurenai, caught unaware Kurenai was caught in the attack. Chains made of chakra held her in place, restricting her hand seals and any other movement. Kurenai sensei, we pass your test, I think. Shino Hinata and Santin stood behind him, all waiting for her approval. Kurenai smiled before responding, Tomorrow teammate begins their first missions as a genin team, see you tomorrow morning at 7 am sharp, Kurenai used Shunshin and left the three genin to themselves. Shino turned and stated he had to go inform his family that he passed and walked away. Hinata said the same and ran home, leaving Naruto alone with Santin in the clearing. Naruto sighed and called Santin along before heading home. Scene break. Shino entered his clan's home and found his father Aburam Shibi collecting bugs in the backyard. Father my team has passed the genin tests and are now official genin. Shibi stopped what he was doing and nodded to his son, who are your teammates and what do you think of them? My teammates are Hayuga Hinata and Yuzumaki Naruto Hinata has her own confidence issues when too much attention is focused on her and Naruto is calm and collected when he fights Shino replied. Shibi nodded before continuing with his work. Scene break. Hinata waved to the guards as she entered her clan home, the branch members smiled and returned the gesture. She was popular among most of the branch members for her kindness, an action looked down on by the Hyuga Elder Council. As she walked she passed her younger sister Hanabi sneered at her father wishes to see you. Hanada sighed at her sister's ill will. It was common knowledge among the Hyuga that Hanabi detested her sister, which was most likely furthered by the words of the council. Hanada couldn't do anything about it, so she nodded in acknowledgement and proceeded to the council chambers where her father would be meeting with the rest of the elders. Scene break. Naruto slowly opened the door to his house before pausing, a strange feeling telling him not to walk forward, hey Santin are you feeling it too? Yep, something's not right, though we won't find anything standing around let's proceed carefully. Slowly, they stepped through the door into the house when Naruto heard the whiz of kunai. Instinct acting he leaned his head forward only to hear the kunai zing by. Sighing he noticed yellow stuff on the floor, upon closer inspection it was. His hair somebody cut his hair. Santin started howling with laughter, while well, Naruto pondered who could have done it, Santin stepped forward only to have a bucket of water drop onto his head. This time it was Naruto's turn to laugh his head off, when realization dawned on him Akira, Ryaiko come on out you got us dot from down the hall came two little blurs before they stopped and yipped at him. They both had snow white fur and were howling with laughter at their father, who still had a bucket on his head, before Naruto reached over and took it off. All right you little pranksters go with your father, while I deal with my hair situation dot. Akira, Santin, and Ryaiko ran down the hallway to their mother, while Naruto walked down to the bathroom, sighing at the twins' antics. Scene break. Ayuga Hiashi pinched the bridge of his nose at the council's suggestion, are you sure you want to do this, he won't accept. We are sure Hiashi we have tried to get his blood into our clan, for while we will have it one way or another the head council member stated. The Ashi sighed and dismissed the council meeting before walking to his office to write the letter, before he was interrupted Tausen you called for me, he Ashi turned to see his eldest daughter Hinata. Yes Hinata did you pass your test? Yes, father my team and I successfully passed Kurenai sensei's test. Dot. He Ashi smiled before turning his face serious again. Hinata the council is up to something again, tell your teammate Naruto to be careful now Hinata was about to reply, but he Ashi had already left to his office leaving Hinata to ponder what he said. Alright there we go next chapter, ooh what is the council planning for our dear hero find out next time. Anoha Forest 2 weeks after Genin exams.
Naruto jumped onto a nearby tree, Santon at his side growling as he caught the scent of their target. A nearby bush rustled a bit before going silent again, Naruto turned and ran for the target one thought running through his mind must kill the cursed cat the Kaiubi, and Santon couldn't help but agree with Naruto. Naruto sensed the cat's presence behind a nearby tree and smirked. Now this was not the I am better than you fear my power smirk, no, it was an I am clinically insane at the moment run for your life or die smirk. Pulling out his chakra, correct my spelling if necessary, Fang which he had named Windbreaker. Why you might ask, well it was because when chakra is applied to the blade wind surrounds it, making it sharp enough to cut through steel. Naruto coursed chakra through the blade and cut in an arc at the tree's base, for a minute nothing happened, then the tree crumbled to one side, leaving nothing in between Naruto, Santon and a now scared witless cat. Naruto raised his blade ready to kill the annoying cat, when a voice stopped him. Naruto put away your blade please and let's go dot. Naruto frowned at his sensei, but nonetheless complied and walked away with Santon, as Hinata came and picked up the poor cat. With the cat in possession they made their way to the Hokage Tower for their pay. Later. Naruto was walking down the marketplace with a genuine smile on his face, he had done many successful pranks in the past weeks and was quite proud of himself. Hada Kakashi had recently been admitted to the hospital with a bad case of extreme shock. Apparently someone had cut out the heads of the women on his Icha Icha Paradise book and replaced them with pictures of Mido Guy smiling. The Anbu who found him had also been treated for shock, coincidentally or not the Anbu was none other than Soren. Either way both Kakashi and Soren were being treated and weren't expected to be back up for a while. Mido Guy and Rock Lee had cried for weeks when they woke one morning to find their green spandex suits gone and the store that sold them was out. Being the stubborn people they were instead ran around in the only other color spandex that was available, pink. The hospitals had never had so many patients since the Great Shinobi Wars. Things worsened when someone stole every spandex suit in Konoha, after crying. Again Konoha was truly shaken by something far worse than the Kaiubi. Mido Guy and Rock Lee were running around Konoha in their usual routine and briefs. Sad to say some ninjas and villagers had to be sent to the clinically insane ward permanently. To make things worse for Ichiha Sasuke at least, someone had posted a picture around the village that showed a sleeping Ichiha in pajamas with little hearts across it and a teddy bear clutched with one hand and his thumb stuck in his mouth. Easy to say Sasuke refused to leave his house for a long time. Most of the male populations were laughing their heads off while the female population thought it was cute. Although it was safe to say that Sasuke had a new goal, to kill the person who humiliated him. The Hokage was found in his office covered in a pool of his own blood with a perverted blush on his face. When he came to he said something about an Warwick no Jutsu and then getting the biggest nosebleed of all time. The clans were hit extremely hard. The Hyuga clan had their entire compound painted with Icha Icha pictures on the walls, windows, and floors, causing many nosebleeds. The inner compound was infested with various wild animals and droppings, the elder council room had been painted pink, and an almost unbreakable illusion was placed that made it seem like invisible half-naked men were attempting to seduce you every 30 seconds. Niji Hayuga woke one morning to find his hair bleached white with various forms of makeup on his face, and to make it worse, the cage bird seal on his forehead was painted like a bird of all things. Several people were admitted to the hospital suffering from closed tinkatsis. To add even more insult their clothes had been permanently dyed pink and polka dots. The Nara clan had to round up all of their deer after someone had let them out while Shikaku was supposed to be watching him. This got him a severe beating from his wife Yoshino. Also Yoshino found an entire collection of Ichicha Paradise books in not only Shikaku's possession but also Shikamaru. No one has heard from them since. Some people have said to have heard an inhuman roar followed by many painful shrieks, screams, and whimpers. The Amanaka and Noichi awoke to find two women he didn't recognize in his bed. When his wife and daughter found him and Noichi had to be admitted to emergency care for a week. The family scrolls were booby-trapped and anyone from the male gender who opened them found themselves in a two-day jinjutsu where obviously gay men raped them non-stop. All the female gender got the same thing except women molested them instead. This of course caused severe mental trauma among the clan. Someone slipped a bug aphrodisiac into the Aburam clan house. Needless to say the bugs were a buzz, pun intended, with activity that not even their masters could stop. When Aburam Shino went to visit his friend in Yuzuka Kiba, one of Shino's fleas had jumped onto Akamaru and had soon spread throughout the kennels. This wasn't the only mishap to occur against the Inuzuka. Someone had slipped a bunch of cats, one happening to be the fire daimyo's cat into the kennels, add to that the kennel locks mysteriously opened, sad to say, the cats and Jen and team sent to retrieve them haven't been heard from since. To top it all of, a dog aphrodisiac was placed which sent all of the animals into a heated frenzy. Hana had the biggest case of pregnant dogs in clan history. The worst off however were the Akamichis. 
Someone had placed a Jinjutsu in their kitchens making them see an endless free buffet, but whenever they tried to reach it, it was always either gone or it would float away from them. Meanwhile someone absconded with all of their food. The Akamichis wept for weeks on end. Yep a lot of pranks were pulled and no one had found the culprit, though it was assured he would be severely beaten to death. Uzumaki clan house. Naruto sat in front of his mirror frowning he had cut his hair so that the ponytail extended to his shoulders, he was looking through his hakamas trying to decide on what to wear. He had swore he was going to tell Hinata about how he felt and had the perfect way to do it. The only thing left was to find what to wear. Naruto cursed the fact that he didn't have a father to help him with this, that's when he remembered someone who could help, grabbing the hakamas he liked he stored them in a ceiling scroll and rushed to the hospital to see Kakashi. Hinoha Hospital. Naruto ran down the hallways to where Kakashi's room was, opening the door he found Kakashi sitting in his bed, staring blankly into space Kakashi-sensei I need your advice please. Yes, Naruto what do you need? Naruto sighed it wasn't easy for him to ask Kakashi something like this, but it was for a good reason, um Kakashi, I need love advice. Kakashi blinked, then blinked again before agreeing to assist him. Naruto smiled before going through the outfits he had brought. An empty forest clearing far from Kanoha. Hinata walked into the clearing where she was told to go for a mission with Kurinai-sensei. Apparently they were to infiltrate a daimyo's ball and were required to wear something formal. Hinata had decided on an elegant white kimono with a golden fox on the bottom. Wonder what gave her that idea, she gasped when she looked around the clearing, there were candles floating on the water by a nearby dock, which gave it quite the romantic atmosphere she walked to the end of the dock when she heard a voice. Hinata-chan I'm glad you could make it, Hinata turned only to blush at the man before her. Naruto wore a red hakama with white flames around the collar and the arm cuffs and the rim at the bottom. His hair was combed neatly into a ponytail that went down to his shoulder, his cerulean eyes shone with a soft warmth that made her blush an even deeper scarlet. Na Naruto K kun what are you doing here? Naruto just walked across the dock until he was right beside her. He took her hand in his causing yet another deep blush. She was about to respond when she noticed that he had pressed his lips to hers, causing anything she would have said to only come out as a muffled cry before she gave in and kissed back. I'm kissing Naruto kun oh my don't faint oh please don't faint Naruto broke the kiss and looked into her eyes before saying I should tear Hinata chan dot. Hinata gave the only response she could I should tear Naruto kun dot. For three hours they did nothing but stand in that position, neither wanting to move. The Uzumaki clan compound. When Naruto got home he was for lack of a better word on cloud nine. He was so caught up in his thoughts he failed to notice the scroll on the ground. Picking it up he opened it only to frown, it was a scroll from Hayuga Hiyashi. Uzumaki said I am sorry to bother you again, but the council won't listen they are intent on getting you to marry Hanabi and unite our two clans, they know that if Hanabi is married, they can hand her the title of heiress I know you won't accept, but they overruled me. I know of your feelings for Hinata and you have my approval, but be warned the council will try whatever they can to get you two apart. Signed. Hayuga Hiyashi Hayuga clan head. Naruto scowled and immediately sent a reply denying the request, along with a personal note to Hiyashi, saying that he and Hinata were indeed now together. Naruto put the scroll in the mail core letter delivery box and hurriedly went up to bed. Well what did you think, yes Naruto's blade has another power, so don't worry, yes it wasn't a long romantic, so sue me. Also I know Hanabi is younger than him, but many Oriental and Japanese cultures believe that strong parents made strong children so naturally the council would chose who they thought was stronger to offer, so to bring forth strong heirs. Now I was thinking about what I would do after this story when something came to me. What if Naruto and Hinata, who will be married by the end of this story, go on an adventure outside of Kanoha stumble onto a stone that transports them to many different dimensions times, with a different dimension time for each story. Crossover fix, with Star Wars, LOTR, Yu Yu Hakusho, Inayasha, Teen Titans, and any other I find interesting and ending the Chronicle series with the return home and dealing with Akatsuki tell me what you think. On with the story. Naruto was upset, no he was pissed he was resting peacefully dreaming about his love Hinata, duh, when he was awoken by an Anbu telling him that he and his team's presence at the Hokage Tower. He knew however when the Hokage called for something important you came. So here he was in the Hokage Tower sent and asleep by his side. He had barely enough time to get his ninja armor on, his blonde hair was in its traditional ponytail that went to his shoulder. He silently observed his team who stood beside him. Kurinai was sitting in a meditative pose legs crossed silently resting or thinking, he honestly didn't know. Her hair was messy and unruly a sign that she was rushed as well. He always thought she was too emotionless and calm. He turned to his other teammate Shino, who was just standing there not moving, not speaking doing nothing. As always. Naruto wondered if he was awake or he was sleeping while standing and hiding it cleverly. 
Naruto pondered this for a moment before turning to his absolute favorite teammate. Hinata sat against the wall just waiting and occasionally looking around but otherwise not moving. He smiled at his girlfriend knowing she was tired, the Hokage would probably not be ready to see them for a little while, so he walked over to her and sat beside her before moving his arm around her shoulder and leaned her head against his shoulder, telling her to sleep. She smiled before quickly dosing off to sleep. Naruto soon found himself dosing off. He leaned his head against his love before dosing off into blissful sleep. Mindscape. Naruto found himself in a large ancient Japanese-style compound with sakura trees and serene lakes, accompanying the older decor. Before him was a large oak door with a Uzumaki clan spiral symbol on it. Naruto frowned he knew where he was, he was in his mindscape which he refurnished to his dream home, but the only one who could call him to his mindscape was Kai Ubi. Opening the door he slowly stepped into the room, he had reformed her cage into this room, there were various books and scrolls for reading entertainment. He found her sitting and reading a scroll entitled Being Trapped Inside a Boy and How to Deal with It. Kai Ubi what do you need from me I was enjoying a nice dream he asked with a mild blush. She stood up eyeing him critically before chuckling. Ah Naruto-kun what's the matter dreaming about Hinata eh, well I wanted to give you something. A summoning contract to be exact Naruto raised an eyebrow at this. No not foxes, but wolves instead seeing as your family possesses a pact with them. I got the contract from Kuri, I know this is from another fanfic, but I needed a name, I give the full credit to that author, now if I could only remember his or her name, in a bet, he sucks at gambling whenever he attempts it. He is powerful, though I mean he'd would need to be to hold the title of the Hachimata no Kami, Seven-Tailed Wolf. Naruto nodded and waited as she unfurled the contract scroll and opened it to let him sign. He willed his blood to appear since it was his mind, he could do what he wanted. Signing the contract and bloody thanked her before he felt the tug at the back of his mind, telling him it was time to wake up. Naruto-kun time to wake up Naruto-kun the Hokage is here to see us spoke a soft voice. Naruto opened his eyes to see pupil-less lavender ones smiling he softly kissed her cheek before getting up and following the rest of their team into the Hokage's office. Naruto stood in front of the Hokage with the rest of his team. The atmosphere was tense, he could almost cut it with a kunai. Naruto turned his attention back to Saratobi as he listened closely to the conversation. He made I have heard disturbing reports from Hada Kakashi and his team, three days ago they left a wave country on an escort mission, however it has turned from a sea to an air rank mission, with the interference of Mamachi's Abusa air rank missing Nin. Also a crime lord by the name of Gatu has interfered, he has a large amount of bandits, mercenaries and Ronin under his command, this of course, has made this too dangerous for one genin team, and all other teams are unavailable, you are to reinforce Kakashi and his team, and eliminate the threat dismissed. The chorus of high answered him as teammate dispersed to prepare themselves for what would promise to be a strenuous mission. An hour and a half later. Teammate was walking along the road to wave country it would take several days for them to reach their destination, and confrontation with the enemy was inevitable. All they could do is pray to avoid it until they met up with Team 7. Too bad they couldn't have everything they wanted. Naruto felt the wind pick up as an arrow whizzed towards them. Jumping back Naruto pulled out his chakra fang and sent his chakra through it, letting wind flow around it. A deep laugh came from the trees as a large burly man stepped out, he had white mane-like hair with a loose armor like Hakama, he also carried a large purple pike on his back, and his eyes spoke of a seasoned warrior who would slaughter all who stood in his path. Bet you know who this is. Ahaha what do we have here reinforcements for the leaf squad, sorry, but my employer can't let you do that, but be honored that you will fall to the pike of Kiji Mead warrior extraordinaire. He pulled the pike off his back as at least 100 men all in samurai armor stepped out from behind him waving various weapons around at them. Naruto prepared to use his ultimate jinjutsu in hopes of scaring some of them when another idea came to him. Performing various seals he slammed his hands into the ground, shouting Taju Ukuchius no jutsu, mass summoning technique, a dozen three-foot wolves appeared before him. Several of the ronin shook a bit before hardening themselves again and charging forward. The mate pulled out their choice of weapons or bugs in Shino's case and charged into the fray. Naruto jumped above three ronin and swung Windbreaker in an arc, removing one opponent's head. Landing he rolled and turned to block a sword strike to the head before pushing forward, breaking his opponent's guard and piercing through his heart, effectively killing him. The third ronin pulled his spear down in an attempt to spear his head, but Naruto stepped to the side and brought his sword up and slashed him from his chest to the face. His opponent wordlessly fell to the ground dead. Another group of samurai leveled their bows towards him and fired. Flashing through some hand seals Naruto shouted Fuyutin, Kazeru Enden, Wind Release. Wind Dragon Missile Technique, I think. A large dragon formed from the wind and soared towards the ronin slashing and slicing all in its path. The group flew backwards landing in a broken heap. Naruto turned to find more opponents when a loud poof reached his ears. 
Naruto turned to see one of his summons get sent up in a puff of smoke due to a large pike courtesy of Kiji, surrounding him were the rest of his summons surrounding Kiji, with many dead ronin bodies surrounding them. Naruto grabbed Windbreaker and ran towards them telling his summons to kill the remaining enemies and to leave Kiji to him. Unknowing to him he was unconsciously sending chakra to his eyes. Kiji saw his new opponent standing before him his katana in a ready stance, blood dripping at the tip. But what perked Kiji's interest was his eyes, they were instead of the cerulean blue a deep amber color with one tomo in each eye. Grinning Kiji put his own weapon in a fighting stance and charged forward. Naruto pulled his katana up to block an overhead strike and spun his blade in an arc towards Kiji's chest. Kiji jumped back and swung his pike low at his foot, but it was blocked as well. Naruto was confused he saw his opponent's strikes before they happened, making it easy to avoid or block the strikes. Kid you're quite the swordsman I haven't had such fun in a long time, but I'm afraid that I have to end this duel. Kiji disappeared faster than Naruto could see and reappeared behind him pike raise to kill. Naruto saw this coming and turned around bringing his blade up to block the blow. Pushing off the pike he sent a roundhouse kick that hit Kiji square on the face, knocking him back a few feet. Naruto fell on his knees, forcing him to use windbreaker for support. He was tired and it was showing he wouldn't be able to block another strike. Santin was with the other wolves engaging the ronin, the same goes for the rest of his team. This left him with Kiji, who was still full of energy. This would be a tricky situation to get out of. Kiji walked forward until he was in striking position. Did you got guts I'll give you that, but you're nowhere near my level of skill, but you've entertained me, so I'll spare you and your team. Bathering his remaining troops he ordered them to retreat. Turning back to Naruto he said. We'll meet again and I'll repay the favor for such a fun duel. Whistling a large black horse in battle armor appeared. Mounting the horse Kiji rode off with his men. Naruto was a little confused, but he didn't have time ponder it further as he slipped into unconsciousness. Hinata ran over to him and checked his vitals before sighing in relief, his injuries were minor, and the worst he suffered from was chakra exhaustion. Santin came to him and slowly picked him up and onto his back. Their destination was not far away if they moved fast enough. So they quickly dashed through the trees to wave country. U Naruto activated his dejutsu and an interesting encounter with Kiji Mead. Personally I like that guy he is cool, nah. Naruto awoke sweating profusely, he felt a weight on his chest and looked down. There laying asleep next to him was Hinata. Her face was hidden by her bangs, but anyone could tell she was happy, pushing away her hair he looked upon her smiling face and in turn smiled. She looked so innocent right now he couldn't do anything but smile. He frowned however when he remembered his dream. Dream sequence. Naruto was in a pass with mountains on both sides behind him and the distance was Konoha and in front of him was an army to say the least. Their armor was a gold color and were armed with spears, katanas, bows, and muskets. This meant only one thing, the samurai armies from the island of Japan had come here to conquer. Six figures, most likely officers stepped forward from the enemy ranks. One was tall at least 5'9 clad in blood red armor with a tri-tip spear on his back, another was a woman clad in purple armor with a face plate. Her hair was brown, and her eyes shone with a warrior's spirit at her belt was a sword that crackled like lightning every now and again, the third officer had spiky brown hair and a rough face he was clad in a grey battle suit with a white coat surrounding it, note I really don't know how Seiken dresses not good with clothing, resting on his shoulder was a large zambatu. The fourth man was tall around his own height of 6'4", clad in sea blue armor with a matching helmet, his face was that of grim determination, he also carried a spear. The next was another woman dressed in a white and blue elegant kimono, and her black hair and a ponytail in her arms was a large bow. The last man was smaller than the others, but looked none the weaker, he was dressed in golden armor like his warriors, his face resembling that of a monkey making Naruto want to chuckle if he wasn't in deep trouble. On the back of his armor however there were spikes spread out like a fan, making him also resemble a peacock. In his hands was a staff that broke apart seemingly which made for an effective weapon. His posture gave off a regal look, and Naruto was sure that he was the commander of the force. What's this? One lone ninja stands against a force of 10,000 a mockery I say and a child no less, though he be as tall as Tadakatsu here you can tell by his face he is very young. Child leave this place go home you have a life ahead of you don't waste it dying here. The leader said loudly over the sea of warriors. Naruto replied by sending chakra to his eyes and activating his Shikutsugan amber eyes, with two tomo appeared and glared at the soldiers and samurai before him. My body is a sword and this pass a burial ground, all who wish to die step forward, for I will defend my home and village with my life. The man sighed before speaking again. Boy your drive to defend your village is admirable, but we will not be stopped here, I am sorry, men attack. The army assembled charged forward at the lone blonde Jinchuriki ready to kill. 
Flashing through hand seals his hands hit the ground before screaming Kuchiyas no Jutsu Shibi no Kami, thanks to the person who told me it was Shibi, not Hachimata, a large puff of smoke appeared before a figure stepped out of the smoke next to Naruto. He was dressed in silver battle armor with a kanji for wolf boss on the front and two long swords in his hands, he had two furry wolf ears and seven tails his eyes were amber, but without the tama like a wolf's eye. He was set in a battle position, waves of killing intent rolling off him, he leveled his gaze at the man leading the enemy. So Naruto you summoned me for battle na, and the odds are against us it seems. He flashed a grin and spoke again all the more fun in the end let's go wild dot. Of course Kuri said I would love to fight a good fight dot. Naruto unsheathed Windbreaker and Kuri unsheathed his own swords before they both charged into the group, cutting down each soldier who stood in their way. Naruto ducked under a sword slash before cutting through his armor and cutting bone and flesh. He brought his blade up and cut through another soldier's throat, ducking low again, he slashed the enemy's legs before cutting the heart. The battle raged on before the officers joined the fray. Naruto looked up from the broken and bloody body surrounding him to see the two women from earlier in a battle stance before him. By now Naruto had completely let go and let instinct guide him, charging forward he dodged arrow after arrow. Pulling his blade up, he blocked an incoming sword strike from the other woman and exchanged several strikes before ducking under her blade and sending a kick to her chest. With the wind momentarily knocked out of her he charged the archer and attacked. Using her bow as a weapon, she blocked a few of his blows before he used his chakra to propel him as he jumped onto her bow itself and kicked her in the face, then using a chakra enforced palm to break her ribs. She went down without a sound, alive, but by no means fighting again in this battle. He channeled his chakra to Windbreaker and watched the wind form around his blade enhancing its edge. Turning back to the other enemy he noticed something a little strange and slightly terrifying. There she stood blade extended and in a battle position, but the blade was surrounded by lightning chakra. Naruto was in awe this woman somehow had obtained a chakra fang, which in the elemental nations was quite a feat, but across the seas, it was nigh impossible to come across one. The woman's voice brought him out of his thoughts. You are a strong warrior, but it ends now, prepare to fall to the blade of Tachibana Ginchio. Naruto brought his blade up and launched a flurry of strikes at her. Ginchio blocked them all and countered with her own strikes, their blades danced strike for strike, blow for blow. Their words and wills spoken through their blades, Naruto ducked low and swung his blade at her feet, aiming to sever her legs from her body, Ginchio jumped over the sword and brought her own down towards his face. Naruto rolled to the side before swatting her blade away and charging forward with intention to kill, she kicked at him forcing him back. Retrieving her blade they circled each other waiting for an opening in their guard. They stopped before rushing at the other for their final exchange of blows. Their blades crossed, lighting flashed and the wind blew, before silence. Everyone had stopped what they were doing and looked on in fascination. Naruto and Ginchio stood stock still, their blades locked in the same position their backs to each other until. Naruto turned around to Ginchio and uttered three words. But fight, samurai. Ginchio fell to her knees and dropped her blade, her chest had suffered a severe cut, she looked up at her executioner, before her eyes faded to blackness. Naruto turned back to the rest of the army his blade drawn and ready to fight. Then dreamscape. Naruto pondered the dream for a moment he was still stroking Hinata's hair as she slept, enjoying the moment of silence and peace. That dream is bothering me I wonder if Kaiubi knows what's going on. Hey Kaiubi. What's the matter Kit the Kaiubi soft voice spoke in his mind. My dream is troubling me, and what is the Chikutsugan why Kit don't you recognize your own bloodline Dejutsu, oh wait I forgot to tell you, oh well like I said the Chikutsugan is your Dejutsu congrats Kit, I'll need to check and see what it does, but I, LL worry about it okay, as for the dream it could be a figment of your imagination, or it could be a premonition of what could happen who knows. Just wake up your vixen and let the others know you're okay and get to training Kit. Naruto cut off the connection while Ichibi Naruto danced waving flags in his head, saying I got a Dejutsu over and over. A Dejutsu would be nice, and whatever it could do would be very entertaining. Not to mention Sasuke would go crazy if he found out I got a Dejutsu and unlocked it before he did. Naruto slowly got up and shook Hinata gently trying to wake her up from her slumber. Slowly she began to open her eyes and look around at her surroundings. When she saw Naruto she smiled before enveloping him in a loving embrace. Good morning my Naru-kun. Good morning Hina-chan it's good to be up and about, now let's go find Kurunai-sensei. However Hinata had other ideas, she latched onto his arm and refused to let him get up or get up herself. Naruto tried to pull away a few times before sighing and laying back down with her, where they cuddled together enjoying each other's presence. One hour later. After finally convincing Hinata to get up, they walked down into the living room where they saw their team, Team 7 and an older man sitting down talking together. 
When they noticed Naruto and Hinata Kakashi smiled, though you couldn't tell, under his mask, Kurenai gave a warm smile, Shino was impassive, Kiba grinned, Sasuke sneered, and Sakura ever the loyal lapdog sneered as well. Well Naruto it seems you've decided to wake up now eh we were starting to get worried said Kakashi. Yeah do, what kept you da, guess who this is. Naruto smiled sheepishly sorry chakra exhaustion and all used up too much of my chakra, enhancing my leg and arm muscles, trying to keep myself alive. Of course the dope can't handle a little pressure I thought as much Sasuke exclaimed arrogantly. Hey Sasuke how many kills has your team dealt out to the enemy, our team killed nearly a hundred Ron in trying to reinforce you, and your teammate Sasuke just seethed before walking out to train and Sakura following him. Kakashi of course just watched with his one visible eye betraying no emotion. Well Naruto, Hinata Kurenai and I have devised a training regime for you, I want 100 laps around the village, 2000 kicks and punches separately to a tree of your choosing, and for you Naruto since you know the water walking exercise 500 push-ups on the water, well you do that the others will watch the bridge and train near it so as not to dull our skills. We will rotate every now and again now go. Naruto and Hinata groaned before running off to do what he said. Encounter at the bridge, demon of the mist, and the return of Kiji, and dangerous predicaments. Naruto groaned as he rolled out of bed, Kakashi and Kurenai had run them all into the ground. Taking shifts they all had similar training except for Naruto, when Kurenai saw that he knew water walking she put him through hell to put it simply. She had him do push-ups on the water, followed by evasion practice which was compassed of Naruto screaming as he ran across the water, dodging any kind of projectiles that Kurenai deemed sharp or heavy enough to throw at him. Naruto of course came home each night with various bruises and scars, which promptly healed of course. It was interesting to watch Sasuke fume when he saw Naruto's chakra fang. He had ranted about how the dope got special treatment Naruto had to resist the urge to smack both the Ichiha and his loyal puppy Sakura for their nearsightedness on the matter. Sasuke had asked, no demanded that Kakashi teach him to wield a katana, Kakashi of course had agreed if only due to the fact that the council would force him anyway. Which reminded Naruto he would have to bring up the civilian council's actions at the meeting, a perk of being a technical clan head and having won a lot of stuff from the major clans in the usual gambling nights the clan heads had together. A lot of money from the Hyuga. And two popular restaurants from the Akamichi a loss that surprisingly didn't bother them seeing as they owned a lot of them already. Hibba and him had gotten along fine, for a few reasons, one being both were pranksters and two, Naruto had beaten Kiba in a fight once, and since then, Kiba had treated him like the alpha male of a pack of dogs or wolves, depending on your view of it. So the duo had pranked the entire village at one point or another, surprisingly the villagers did nothing to stop them, since the pranks didn't hurt anyone or anything, and they brought some cheer and livelihood around the area. Inari's angsty mood did nothing to deter his good mood, and after a lot of yelling, Inari had steered clear of Naruto and Hinata respectively. All in all it was a good two weeks until today that is, which brings us back to the situation at hand. A rather loud scream had brought Naruto out of his comfortable dream when he found the person who screamed there would be hell to pay. However that changed when he heard voices. Hey you bullies let go of my mom. Well look the brat has a voice after all. No Inari run away get help please dot. That was all it took for Naruto to jump out of bed and get his armor on and grab his sword and run down the stairs. When he got there he saw Tsunami tied up on the floor and Inari next to her, two Ronin stood above them. Naruto immediately drew his blade and rushed forward, the two Ronin stepped up readying their own blades in a defensive stance. Naruto swung his sword in an arc towards the closest one's head, the Ronin blocked, exactly what Naruto wanted, Naruto pressed the blade forward before charging forward under his opponent's guard and kicking him in a painful area. Naruto kicked him again in the face sending him to the ground out cold before turning back to the other. Naruto stepped forward slowly, releasing some of Kaiubi's killing intent, sending chills down the man's spine and freezing him in place for a few moments before he broke free and ran towards Naruto weapon raised. His movements were sloppy and riddled with doubt and uncertainty, which is what Naruto wanted, the man brought his sword in a downward slash, aiming for Naruto's head. Naruto easily sidestepped and rushed forward before slashing the sword through the Ronin's throat, killing him instantly. Naruto pulled the blade out before watching the bodies crumple to the ground lifeless, Naruto turned to the other round and tied him up. Tsunami and Inari were still out, so he wrote a note explaining what happened and a few comforting words before running to the bridge to assist his comrades, since they were undoubtedly under attack as well. As he ran his thoughts went back to the round and he killed, I killed him so easily my movement seemed to come naturally, as if I had more experience than I really did like my mind shut out everything else, hum I look into it later. He jumped to the trees and proceeded to the bridge, however before he could get there a pike was swung at his face. At the bridge. The Kashi and Kurenai were facing of Zabuza, who was standing across from them with his sword out pointing at the ground. 
Zabuza hunter Nin accomplice was facing off against Kiba, Hinata, and Sasuke at the other end of the bridge, while Sakura protected Tazuna, she's useless anyway, so she won't be doing much this story. Zabuza lifted his blade and began to speak Kakashi, this can all be avoided if you just hand over the old man to us. Kakashi didn't reply. So be it prepared to die Karigakur no Jutsu dot. A thick mist rolled in around them, Zabuza disappeared into the mist, while Kakashi unveiled his Sharingan, and Kurinai drew two kunai and got into a ready stand staring into the mist, searching for Zabuza. Kakashi drew two kunai and turned blocking the Zambatu with the kunai, throwing Zabuza off balance for a moment before he attacked again, swinging his blade from side to side, Kakashi ducked under it and threw his kunai at Zabuza's legs. Zabuza jumped up only to bring his blade up to block the swarm of shuriken from Kurinai. Flashing through seals Kakashi shouted Katen. Kakaku no Jutsu, Zabuza used his Zambatu to cut the fireball in half before flashing through his own Jutsu Suiten. So Yuudan no Jutsu. A large water dragon formed and flung itself at Kakashi and Kurinai who jumped out of the way before launching themselves at him again. A and I making Zabuza and Haku last longer for a special purpose. But Haku and the Genin. Kiba cursed and jumped back barely dodging a wave of Senban from the masked Hunter Nin, they were trapped in a large ring of ice mirrors. The Hunter Nin was hiding in the mirrors waiting and then attacking with a volley of Senban needles. To add to the situation fireballs weren't melting them. Please give up I don't want to hurt you, but I will if I have to. Gee as if we'd ever give in to you Kiba replied hotly. The Hunter Nin said nothing, but instead pulled out another volley of Senban needles and fired them at Kiba. Kiba was about to dodge when it happened, his eyes widened in shock when he saw Hinata in front of him two Senban needles in her throat, she stood there for a moment before collapsing onto the cold steel of the bridge. Kiba ran over to her and checked her pulse, her eyes were closed and a smile on her face. Kiba inwardly smiled she was obviously thinking of Naruto in her last moments, Kiba started to cry, though he didn't acknowledge it her pulse was gone, she was dead. He gently set her down before standing and turning to Sasuke who was just looking at Hinata's dead form, he looked to Kiba for confirmation, Kiba just nodded not knowing what to say. Sasuke Pav. Sasuke was beyond stunned Hinata was dead, it couldn't be true there was no way. Sasuke didn't let anyone notice, but he did indeed like a girl he only kept quiet because his other fangirls would make her an outcast. He truthfully loved Hinata, she was quiet, cute strong, not one of his rabid fangirls, and a generally nice person. Part of the reason he loathed Naruto was because of Hinata, or more appropriately her crush on Naruto. Hinata was the one he wanted but could never have, because she was in love with another, but now she was gone. His blood began to boil as intense rage swept through him calling for her killer's blood. His eyes flashed red with one comma in each eye, though that didn't occur to him he was too caught up in his rage. Normal Pav. Sasuke's chakra flared as he charged the mirrors again, he saw the masked ninja jump from the mirrors ready to attack again. Sasuke jumped away from the needles and launched a flurry of kunai before jumping straight at her flashing through the seals for his favorite jutsu. But the loud cry of Kaiten Gakaku no jutsu a larger fireball flew towards his enemy, who simply flew back into the mirrors before coming out and throwing a large flurry of needles at him. Sasuke dodged to the side before dodging again damn, even with this new skill, I still can't hit him what am I doing wrong. Back with Naruto. Naruto jumped to the forest floor windbreaker in hand looking up at the trees, there on a branch stood Kiji with his pike in his hand staring straight down at him. Naruto mentally swore of all the times that this could have happened, Santin chose now to have to head home, since his mate was expecting again, now Naruto was alone with this monster of a warrior. Kiji jumped down from the tree branch and slowly walked toward Naruto his pike on his back, Naruto walked forward as well his sword in hand, though he wouldn't attack his opponent like this, it wasn't what true warriors did. They stopped and just stared each other down waiting for the other to make the move. Kid you've got the heart and mind of a true warrior I like that, and so does Kanetsugu Kiji said. Naruto just cocked an eyebrow as a man walked out of the forest and stood behind Kiji. He was tall though not near as tall as Kiji, he wore brown battle armor with a white coat with red edges over it, in his right hand was a simple sword. He wore a tall helmet on his head with a few bangs hanging out over his eyes. His face was set in a look of complete determination as he returned Naruto's scrutinizing gaze. Did meet my pal now Kanetsugu master strategist and all-around honest warrior. Kanetsugu bowed slightly, a simple introduction which Naruto repeated. You must be Naruto, Kiji has said good things about you, now since Kiji is not the best with words I'll speak what we're here for. Get you the man who hired us to kill oppressive ninjas attacking a village plans to betray us. We are new in this area so we had no reason not to believe him, so we took our forces along with his and formed an alliance to kill your group, it was not until we overheard him talking in his office one night that we learned the truth. Of course we didn't like the idea of serving such an evil man, we decided we would go and look for a lord to serve, someone who followed the true ways of the warrior and a noble ideal Kanetsugu stated. 
Naruto had a strange feeling in the pit of his stomach, but he chose to ignore it, praying to whatever deity existed out there that he wasn't right. He really didn't want to explain to Oji-san why a small army was following him to the village if he was right. Naruto-san we wish to assist you in driving off the bandits and other scum who are planning to attack the bridge. DG, Kanetsugu I'll accept your help, we certainly need it, but the bridge is most likely under attack while we wait we have to go now. DG smiled and turned to the top of an embankment before waving his hands around. Naruto was confused before a thunderous cheer erupted from the embankment. Rushing to the top Naruto gasped when he saw the assembled soldiers below there were at least 1500 men there. Naruto almost toppled over the embankment when Kiji gave him a friendly tap, but recovered in time only to yelp as Kiji pulled him onto Matsuka's before riding off to the bridge, the army in tow behind him. Both Kakashi and Kurenai. Kakashi kicked the Zanbatu out of the way before tossing a kunai at Zabuza. Kurenai had been knocked unconscious early in the fight from a particularly nasty suit in Jutsu. Zabuza dodged the kunai and disappeared into the mist. Kakashi jumped up narrowly avoiding an incoming kunai, only to be impaled by Zabuza. Kakashi dissolved into water revealing it as only a Mizubunshin. Kakashi you can't beat me Haku found the flaw in your Sharingan eye, that parlor trick isn't going to be of any use anymore. Dot. That may be, but I won't quit Kakashi replied. Very well Kakashi. Zabuza charged forward on the offensive once again ready to cleave Kakashi in two. But Sasuke and Kiba. Sasuke was once again pushed back again, even with this newfound strength he couldn't land a single hit on his opponent, it was infuriating to no end. Kiba couldn't get back into the mirrors leaving him alone against a superior opponent. Now he was stuck, wounded and outclassed in a hostile situation. The masked nin pulled out more senbin and Sasuke knew he couldn't dodge this time he would die here. The ninja threw the volley of senbin at him, he waited for the end, but it never came when he opened his eyes he gasped at the person before him. Naruto turned to Sasuke his sword still in a defensive position, he smiled at Sasuke before turning back to his opponent and readying himself for another volley. Another intruder I have no choice but to kill again I am sorry, the masked nin said solemnly. Something clicked in Naruto's brain something he didn't like kill, again that would mean he had killed someone here already, but who could it have be dot? Sasuke. Naruto said his voice concealing the rage of emotions going through his head, where is Hinata-chan Sasuke dot? Sasuke looked down unable to say anything. Naruto was getting frantic he looked around desperate to find some trace of her, when he did his heart sunk. There she was on the ground unmoving two senbin needles in her throat. Naruto couldn't help it he began to cry letting out the extreme sadness that overwhelmed him. Ayubi lend me your power, please let me avenge her death, please I beg you. Sure thing kid avenge her life young one, I'm sorry. Ayubi's chakra seeped through him slowly changing him. His whiskers became more defined, his eyes turned blood red, and his nails turned to claws. A red aura surrounded him he was angry, and he would tear his opponent apart. The hunter nin seeing he was in trouble launched his needles into Naruto's flesh. The needles connected only to be shaken out a moment later. Naruto let out a demonic roar before charging one of the mirrors faster than the nin could see he had destroyed one of the mirrors and sent the enemy flying onto the bridge. Both Kakashi and Zabuza. Kakashi's eyes widened as he felt a familiar wave of chakra flash across the bridge, this chakra it's the Kyubi's chakra. Kakashi pulled out a scroll and cut his hand before placing it on the scroll. Zabuza I'm afraid I have to end this battle here. Let's see you try Kakashi. Kakashi flashed through several seals before calling out Doton. Earth Fang Tracker no Jutsu, not sure of the Japanese name, a pack of dogs jumped out of the ground and each grabbed onto one of Zabuza's limbs holding him in place. Kakashi formed several more seals before a chirping sound rang throughout the bridge. Back with Naruto and Haku. Naruto stopped he nearly dropped his katana his body was frozen, his eyes showed complete shock and sadness. The hunter nin's mask cracked and broke, revealing the face of a woman not that much older than he, but what really froze him were her eyes they held the same happiness, sadness, joy, and pain as Hinata. He fell to his knees he couldn't kill her, it would be like killing Hinata, which is something he just couldn't do not on his life. She stared blankly back at him her legs obviously broken she looked up at me and coughed before speaking. The one you love still lives just remove the senbin, and she will return to the world of the living, although she'll be injured for a while. The girl then lost conscious and laid there on the bridge out like a light. Naruto turned to rush to her side when he heard what sounded like birds chirping, and he gasped. He knew that attack it was Kakashi's signature move the Rikiri. Kakashi would need his help, but Hinata did also reluctantly he called out to Kiba. Kiba Hinata's alive remove the senbin from her throat and watch over her and Sasuke's awake but drained of chakra and can't defend himself. He hoped Kiba heard him, remembering what he needed to do here and off to help Kakashi. 
When he arrived he saw Zabuza with Kakashi's hand plunged through his chest. Naruto stopped thinking he wouldn't need to help when Zabuza grabbed Kakashi's arm holding him in place and raised his Zanbatu ready to strike. Naruto let off a burst of speed and used Windbreaker to intercept the blade. They connected with a loud clang, Zabuza growled and pushed forward, slowly pushing Naruto's blade back. Naruto pumped his chakra into the blade and nearly stumbled when it began to reform and morph into a Zanbatu similar to Zabuza's. Naruto began to push forward until he had knocked Zabuza's blade away, loosening his grip on Kakashi's arm, freeing him. Kakashi stepped back watching the demon of the mist fall to the ground lifeless. The mist began to clear revealing Kiji, Kanetsugu, and their men standing behind him while across the bridge stood a short man with gray hair, a brown suit, and a cane standing in front of a massive force of bandits and mercenaries. He looked over the bridge before scowling. Well it seems the demon of the mist has failed me, and Kiji and Kanetsugu have decided to betray me, the older man sneered. The Vildor you have planned to betray us, and you lied to us about our targets, you fiend Kanetsugu countered. Well it still means I don't have to pay you, and besides once I'm finished with you, me and my friends here will play with your two cute lady friends. Especially that blue haired girl she seems very beautiful, maybe I'll make her my personal slave. Naruto flinched he did not just say that, that was the worst possible thing to say to him at the time. He turned to Gatu with cold eyes, they weren't the eyes of the Kaiubi, but they conveyed the same rage and killing intent. He smiled a cruel smile before beginning to remove his armor piece by piece. He was now clothed in a simple hakama with intricate red and blue flame designs scattered on it. He tossed away the armor and smiled when it made a massive indent on the bridge, he then stopped the chakra flow to his blade, reverting it back to a katana. He stepped to the side of a stray arrow and frowned when it cut the tie holding his ponytail together letting it fall. Think around Kenshin episode 30 when he fights Sato and his hair falls down, and you got the look I'm going for, he slowly stalked towards Gatu, his eyes freezing everyone in place he got closer and closer until Gatu managed to get out of it. MM me men attack him at once Gatu stuttered out afraid for his life. Several mercenaries stepped forward to attack only to fall down seconds later from Naruto's blade, to most it seemed that he never moved. He kept walking forward step by step. Finally both sides got out of the killing intent and charged forward at each other. Naruto kept walking forward cutting through anyone who stood in his way, he left a trail of bodies as he walked closer and closer to Gatu who was backing up to his boat. An arrow hit one of the mercenaries. Naruto turned to see Inari and a horde of villagers there armed and ready. They charged into the mercenaries adding to the slaughter of the enemy. Gatu by now had reached his boat and was about to climb onto the rope connecting the bridge and boat when the wind picked up cutting the ropes from the bridge. Gatu turned to see Naruto standing over him, a murderous look in his eyes, his blade raised high. Gatu tried to stammer out an offer or excuse or whatever, but all his pleas fell on deaf ears as Naruto brought his blade down on his head, silencing him forever. Everyone stopped and looked as Gatu fell to the ground lifeless. A group of mercenaries gathered their courage and charged Naruto intent on killing them for taking away their source of cash. Naruto didn't even look at them as he dodged each and every blade before killing the entire group quickly, the rest of the mercenaries faltered before they rallied again and renewed their attack again. Naruto continued killing the enemy ruthlessly, while Kaiubi watched from her cage slightly intrigued by the development. Kakashi thought it was merely remnants from Kaiubi's power however Kiji and Kanetsugu knew what was happening, they had seen Naruto's eyes, they were turning into the eyes of a Batausai, a manslayer, and this battle would only further his battle instincts until it was fully honed. The battle soon turned against the mercenaries and they fled. Naruto had walked over to Hinata before falling into unconsciousness. Later when he finally woke up he was immediately glomped by Hinata, soon after Kiji and Kanetsugu left to search for work. Sasuke recovered quickly before going back to training of course, while silently relieved that Hinata was alive, Sakura who hadn't seen the battle immediately assumed her precious Achiha had saved the day, even though he had denied it again and again. Kiba and Kurenai got out mostly unscathed, except for a few bruises and scratches. When the bridge was finished they had immediately set out back for Konoha. The villagers affectionately named the bridge the Great Naruto Bridge, to which Sakura scoffed, muttering how it should have been named the Great Sasuke Bridge instead, everyone mostly ignored her, and so their adventure at Wave Country was brought to an end. Naruto sat in a meditative pose at his team's training grounds awaiting Kurenai-sensei who was for once late, which was highly unusual for her. It didn't concern Naruto too much, no he was too busy talking to Kaiubi to really notice it. So time for explanations Kaiubi. One what did I do at the bridge with my sword, two what can my dejutsu do, and three why did I lose myself there on the bridge against Gatu's men. Well kid your weapon seems to have a second property, it appears that if you channel enough chakra through your blade while having it touch another weapon, then it can reform into that weapon, afterwards all you must do is apply some chakra and you can change your weapon to suit your needs. 
Now onto your Tejutsu, it is called the Chikutsugan as you already know. Its abilities like the Sharingan can predict movement, also the Sharingan can copy Jutsus and Tejutsu techniques, but the Chikutsugan can do so much more, it doesn't copy a technique it gives you complete knowledge about the technique, what it does, how it's done its weaknesses, strengths and counters, as well as how powerful it is, unfortunately it only comes to those who acquire the third Tomo. Out of four in total. The fourth Tomo, which is nigh impossible to obtain, uses a special jutsu called Mind Prison. Does anyone have a Japanese translation for this? This technique imprisons a person within his or her own mind, making them unable to get out while their body is susceptible to harm, and as a bonus, the Sharingan is useless against your Tejutsu. Yes, take that team. If you're finished I'd like to explain your last question and take a nap. Now when you first went into a rage-induced state against that Miss Ninja you unlocked quite a bit of my killer intent, now when that man made that threat to your vixen, you entered a warrior-like rage. Simply put this rage is more of a state of mind where you give yourself into your inner Batausai, or Manslayer, due to my killer intent, and the kills you have done beforehand has caused this state to manifest. It can be controlled so that you may enter it at will, but it will take time and training, which I will deal with later. Wow thanks Kaiubi that was informative. Yeah yeah kid I'm going back to sleep now. Hutting of the mental connection Naruto awoke from his meditative state and saw that his teammates had arrived as well, Hinata had decided to sit next to him and snuggled into his shoulder, while Shino did what he did and stood there silently. It was then that Naruto remembered something he forgot to ask Shino for a while. Hey Shino, where were you when we were at the bridge? Shino paled considerably at that as he remembered why. Flashback no jutsu. Shino was running to the bridge. He felt a considerable chakra spike, which made it clear that there was trouble, and he needed to get there and help. However Kami had it in for him that day as he unceremoniously fell into a pitfall trap. He groaned as he sat up and noticed his situation. A minor miscalculation on my part now I just have to mold chakra like the tree walking exercise and walk out Shino calmly stated. But as he began, he noticed that he couldn't mold chakra. His bugs told him that there was a chakra suppression seal on him that kept him from getting out. Shino was about to make a sarcastic comment about his predicament when a loud voice rang out. Shino kuuuuun I know you're here and I will find you. Shino paled again, not this woman not here not now. Shino's nightmare was realized when a girl poked her head into the hole and looked at him. She had brown hair and hazel eyes, with a leaf headband around her neck. Shino kun I knew I'd find you true love prevails. The girl proclaimed. Oh man not her why me a why her of all the possible women. Mia was a young leaf genin who had by some strange circumstance or another, had seen his face without his trench coat or glasses, and had instantly turned into a fangirl. Mia how'd you get here? Shino asked. Why Shino-kun I love you of course I'd be here. Mia replied. She then did something that Shino thought would happen only in his nightmares she turned from one Mia into ten, and they all started to give him those lustful stares and began to walk forward slowly pulling at her shirt. Shino paled and tried to call on his bugs to defend himself, but found he couldn't contact them at all. The Mias quickly closed in on him and glomped him while still slowly undressing. Shino tried to struggle but couldn't move at all. So in desperation he did the only thing he could he let out a blood-curdling scream, which was uncommon coming from Shino. Three hours and several hundred nosebleeds later, Shino awoke to find himself in a pitfall completely clothed, thankfully it was an illusion only. Flashback no Jutsu Kai. Shino just grunted and mumbled something about stupid illusions. Naruto not understanding what that meant sighed and went remembered why Kurenai had called a team meeting so early. Flashback no jutsu. Naruto sat at his seat in the council chambers the Hokage had called a meeting to discuss the teams that would be participating in the upcoming Chunin exams. He mentally sighed at the look some of the civilian council members were sending his way, the civilian council didn't like him one bit. Every chance they got they petitioned for him to be executed or banished, however Suratobi Jai-san and the Shinobi Council always voted against them. The council quieted down when the Hokage entered the room, followed by the Jounin senseis. Good evening everyone I have called you all here to discuss the Chuanin exams and some news concerning my old student Orochimaru. The civilians whispered to each other, while the Shinobi instantly put all their attention on the Sandame. Now as you know the Chuanin exams are taking place in Kanoha this year, Jounin senseis do you think your teams are ready to participate in the exams? I Suratobi Asuma nominate Team 10 consisting of Yamanaka Ino, Akamichi Chaoji, and Nara Shikamaru for the Chuanin exams. I Uuhi Kurenai nominate my team of Yuzumaki Naruto, Hayuga Hinata, and Aburam Shino for the Chuanin exams they are ready. I Maito Gai nominate my youthful team of Hayuga Niji, Rock Lee and Tenten for the Chuanin exams. Several other Jounins nominated their team, although Kakashi hadn't yet. Some of the civilian council were tapping and glaring at Kakashi. Naruto knew what was going on, and he was starting to get angry at the civilian's shallowness. 
When the last team was nominated the head of the civilian council stood up, a and some nameless bastard, and addressed Kakashi. Kakashi-san you haven't nominated your team yet, why? Well they aren't ready yet, they don't act as a team should. Sasuke just cares for himself and only helps his teammates in battle, so he doesn't fail the mission her cares nothing for himself. Sakura is no better she cares for Sasuke and Sasuke only. The client and myself could be dangling over a cliff by a rope about to fall to our doom, and if Sasuke was in the least bit of trouble, she would disregard her other teammate completely. Kiba is the only one who could and would try to act like a team, though Sasuke and Sakura just ignore him. Basically they don't understand what it means to be a team, thus putting them in the position to make Chunin would be bad for Konoha. This got the council's attention. Many of the civilian council were muttering angry things to Kakashi, while the shinobi were nodding their head in approval of his decision. This is absurd Kakashi you must nominate the Ichiha and his team, that's an order. Bellowed the civilian council head. Naruto had had enough of this he released his killer intent into the room, noticing some of the clan heads and the Hokage were doing so as well. Since when has the civilian council had the right to interfere with shinobi business, I know you have been forcing Kakashi to train the Ichiha alone, and I must say you are overstepping your boundaries tread lightly. If Kakashi-san doesn't want to nominate his team then he doesn't have to Naruto spat. Be quiet brat do not interfere Ichiha-sama deserves to be trained alone, he deserves to participate in the exam. Now good majorities of the shinobi in the room were releasing killing intent. Naruto grinned he had an idea that would benefit both sides, but mostly the shinobi's side. I call a vote raise your hands if you want Ichiha-san's team to participate in the exams. Every civilian raised their hand while the shinobi looked at him like he had grown a second head. But neither he nor Haruno Sakura may advance to Chunin rank. Now every shinobi raised their hands while the civilians cursed themselves for being tricked. Naruto was proud of himself he was learning politics well, and he was able to trick the council into passing the vote that was best for Konoha, though half didn't want to admit it. Very good now that that matter is solved we are brought to the subject of Orochimaru, our spies have told us he has been sighted near the hidden villages of stone, sand, and sound, how will we deal with this matter? The rest of the council meeting was down in rank ninjas only so regrettably Naruto had to leave and couldn't hear the rest. Then flashback. Naruto opened his eyes just as Kurunai appeared in a poof of smoke, holding a stack of forms in her hands. Kurunai sensei where were you Shino inquired. Sorry team I have decided to nominate you for the Chunin exams this year, it's your choice to participate though, just be at the academy in two weeks at two o'clock. Naruto Hinata and Shino nodded before signing the forms. Having finished her task Kurunai dismissed the teams. Break. Naruto was walking through the village by himself pondering the upcoming exams, training, and Orochimaru's sightings. Something was going to happen soon he knew it deep in the pit of his stomach. He was cut from his thoughts when he heard a scream he remembered all too well. Konohamaru got himself into trouble again. Naruto sighed knowing he'd end up saving him again. But he grinned remembering that he had to get Konohamaru back for a certain prank. So Naruto stealthily made his way to the scream. When Naruto arrived he saw a seven-way stare down. He saw Sasuke glaring at three sand genin and three cloud genin. The sand team consisted of a girl with blonde hair tied into four ponytails with a fan on her back, a boy in a cat suit with makeup and a bundle on his back. And finally the most interesting one a red-haired boy with black rings surrounding his teal eyes, showing clear signs of insomnia and a gourd on his back. Naruto felt something strange about this genin, but put it off as something to ask Kaiubi later. The cloud genin was made up of a boy with silver hair, a face mask and standard assassin outfit think of Kakashi, when he was on a genin team, yes he will play an important role in the story, a girl with green hair dressed in black samurai armor with a katana across her back. And a blonde haired girl, with blue eyes, dressed in a plain white kimono, she too had the same weird feeling as the red haired boy. Naruto noticed Konohamaru and his friends were stuck in the middle, obviously scared out of their wits. Naruto decided to end this squabbling and reveal himself. When he did the females immediately stopped and stared at him with miniature hearts, except for the blonde cloud genin who along with the red head and the Kakashi impersonator, all had one thought he isn't an ordinary ninja, I didn't even see him move. Sasuke was peeved because Naruto took the spotlight from him, and he himself didn't sense him at all. Konohamaru didn't know whether to be glad or afraid that Naruto was going to kill him for what he had pulled a few weeks ago. I'm sorry am I interrupting something, I mean petty fights can wait till the exams. Then Kuro Tamari we're leaving the red head said before turning around and walking away. The cloud team followed their example, and they too began to walk away. Wait Sasu called out, what are your names? I am Sabaku no Gara. I am Yujito of Kumo, we are interested in you too as well. Dot. I am Ichiha Sasuke, and he is Yuzumaki Naruto stated Sasuke who had decided to speak for the both of them. Very well Ichiha Sasuke and Yuzumaki Naruto we look forward to seeing you in the exams, Gara said before both teams walked away. 
Konohimaru decided to take this chance to silently slip away however it was no use. Going somewhere Konohimaru Naruto said in an eerily calm voice. Konohimaru just stuttered incoherent things before Naruto used Senen Garashi to send him flying away. Naruto smirked before heading home to hopefully learn some new combo techniques for him and Santin. Exam time. Naruto arrived at the academy with Santin and Toe, they had trained extensively for this moment and were confident in their abilities. He quickly found Hinata and Shino and gave Hinata a quick kiss before they all went inside. They went up two levels before they saw a crowd of genins waiting outside a door which was obviously in a Jinjutsu, while Tu Chuanin pushed back a green spandex wearing genin, knocking him onto his back. You losers aren't ready to become Chuanin the first Chuanin said. Yeah these exams are tough, many ninja have lost their lives in this exam or have been forced to quit as ninja due to severe physical or mental damage his partner agreed. The genin pleaded for them to let them through, only to be bluntly refused. Naruto saw Sasuke getting ready to do something incredibly stupid and arrogant and signaled to his team to help. Before Sasuke could reveal the Jinjutsu Naruto tackled him to the ground silencing him. Sakura tried to help only to find a wall of bugs blocking her way. Sasuke you arrogant fool don't do it, the more genins that quit the less amount of competition to face in the exams. Sasuke just scoffed and turned away pouting that he couldn't get in the spotlight. Naruto rolled his eyes at this and waited for the hopeless candidates to leave. One hour later. Sure enough eight genin teams left and the Chuanin smirked before releasing the illusion and disappearing. Naruto sighed in relief before heading up to the waiting room, especially after seeing the green spandex wearing ninja declare his eternal love for Sakura. Once inside the waiting room's team 10 greeted Naruto and his team. Shikamaru mumbled about how troublesome it would be, Choji offered his greetings, while Lino just asked if Sasuke and his team were here. Sure enough Team 7 walked in the door looking very disgusted. Ino had immediately attached herself to his arm before entering a shouting match with Sakura. The rookies should quiet down, you're annoying everyone else suggested a silver-haired leaf genin. Oh yeah who are you to tell us what to do yelled Kiba. The name's Kabuto and this is my seventh exam so I have information on a lot of people. The information is available if you wanted, it's the least I could do to help out the rookies. Sasuke was intrigued he could get some information on Naruto and those other strange ninjas. Yes I want info on Yujito of the Cloud, Sabaku no Gara, Rock Lee of the Leaf, and Yuzumaki Naruto of the Leaf. Sasuke demanded. Naruto's eyebrows twitched for a moment before he scowled at Sasuke and returned his gaze to Kabuto, almost daring him to do it. Alright let's see here, Yujito of Kumo, 65 D rank missions, 29 C rank, 4 B rank, and 2 A rank, said to be the prodigy of Kumo, said to have the skills of a Jounin, now that's impressive. Sabaku no Gara, 10 D rank, 20 C rank, and 1 B rank, also said to have come back from every mission without a scratch. Rock Lee is a year older than you, 30 D rank, and 15 C rank missions, said to have incredible Tajutsu skill. And lastly Uzumaki Naruto. He was cut off as Naruto grabbed a card and looked it over before scowling this man had too much information on him, information that was supposed to be classified to all but the highest ranked individuals. Sasuke was fuming, he wasn't able to find information on the dope, what could he be hiding? The Buto went on to explain about all the shinobi villages that had entered the exams. When he mentioned Odo however he was quickly assaulted by the sound genin. Even though he dodged he was still hurt somehow. The poof of smoke signaled the arrival of the fist examiner, a tall scarred man in complete black. Listen up maggots I am Morono Ibiki first examiner, no fighting allowed unless you wish to be disqualified now sit down it's time for the first exam. Next chapter done remember to rate and review please people. Also if anyone's got suggestions for a combination move for Naruto and Santin, please help me out. Naruto grumbled incoherent things as Konohimaru led him across half the village, saying that Kakashi and Sorin were vulnerable to a prank he had planned. Their little trek eventually led them to the hot springs where they stopped on the roof of the male's side of the hot springs, or did they? Naruto felt a strong presence behind him paling after hearing the word Konoha's ancient supreme tojutsu technique, thousand years of death. Kakashi swiftly sent Naruto through the roof and into the hot springs. Now normally Naruto wouldn't have been bothered since it was the male hot springs, but when he felt the scent of lust in the air he knew something was seriously weird. Turning he almost screamed there clad in only towels, were about a dozen teenage genin and academy students, but what was worse was that these were no not fan girls, but fan boys. They stared at him for a moment before rushing at him forgetting the need to cover themselves. Am you Kakashi, Sorin and Konohimaru I swear you'll pay were Naruto's thoughts as he ran for his life and virginity. And Amik. Hey and now I'm not going to go into major detail about the first exam it's basically the same except Santin helps Naruto everything else is the same really Naruto does his little speech blah blah blah. Banko the next examiner was special yeah that's it, special in the insane way. She was oozed of bloodlust and insanity.
She led the group of Junin candidates to a large fence containing an even larger forest. She stopped and turned eyeing the genin like slabs of meat. All right maggots this is training area 44, also known as the forest of death, here is where the next exam will be located, and your objective is simple, each team will be given a heaven scroll, or earth scroll your mission is to spend 5 days in the forest, and get one of both scrolls heaven and earth, the rules are simple if you leave the forest before the 5 days are over. Or if a teammate is incapacitated or killed you are disqualified, also remember to be at the tower with both scrolls by the 5th day Anko explained. What about food Choji asked. There's plenty in the forest to eat you just need to know where to look. Also don't forget to sign the consent forms we don't want to be blamed for the inevitable deaths to come. The teams quickly left to sign the forms and gather the scrolls. Soon after everyone had acquired their scrolls each team was led to an individual gate and awaited the timer to start. The mate were all staring at the gate waiting for the signal to go. Naruto had his hand resting on Windbreaker with Santin at his side, Hinata had her eyes closed in deep thought, and Shino was being well Shino. The gates open and the signal goes off. Teammate dashed into the forest, the second exam had begun. Five minutes into the forest. Naruto and his team stopped in a nearby clearing, already they had encountered several giant spiders and centipedes. Okay we need a plan, so Shino send out your bugs to find a target, well Hinata uses her Byakugan against any enemy ambushes got it. Hinata and Shino nodded before going off to their respective tasks. Hey Kayubi any idea on those two genin I told you about earlier. Yes Naruto kun those two were containers like yourself the girl contained the Nibi, well the boy had the Ichibi, though it seems the Ichibi is poorly sealed however. Um, I guess I'll have the chance to put my seals to use eh? Yes it appears so kid. Naruto was broken out of his thoughts by Shino, who reported that there was a Miss team not far from them. And so they went off in search of their targets. The Miss team was apparently very inexperienced since they weren't able to detect teammate until it was too late. Each of the Miss Genin turned only to face a sword strike from Naruto, a Jayuken strike to the heart from Hinata, and a swarm of bugs from Shino. When Naruto checked for their scroll they discovered an heaven scroll, since they had one already they pocketed it for later bartering with any other teams. They decided to head towards the tower and ambush any team they crossed. As they jumped they detected a chakra spike to the west and went to investigate. When they arrived they saw Kiba and Akamaru unconscious and a paralyzed Sakura, while Sasuke was on his knees panting with a grass ninja standing over him smirking. Naruto told Hinata and Shino to assist Kiba and Sakura while he helped Sasuke. But Sasuke and Oro team. Sasuke was panting heavily as he glared at his opponent. The grass ninja outclassed him immensely and defeated him swiftly. Sasuke-kun is this the best that the Ichiha have to offer I'm disappointed the grass ninja said. Sasuke was about to retort when the grass ninja jumped back avoiding a katana strike from Naruto of all people. Sasuke didn't know who to glare at, the ninja who had just stomped him or Naruto, either were people he didn't like at all. He decided to glare at both and watch the fight. Naruto swung his blade again aiming for the grass ninja's head, who easily moved out of the way and kicked him in the chest, sending him back into a tree. Naruto gasped in pain before getting back up and rushing forward again. Sheathing his blade Naruto ran through several seals with Santin behind them before regular Bunshin under the guise of Cage Bunshin of the duo rushed forward towards the grass ninja. The Bunshin phased through the enemy sending him slightly off balance. Naruto hit the grass ninja with an uppercut and began to kick the ninja higher into the air. Naruto gave one last kick before Santin used his Kei's Haku no Jutsu to send him even higher. Naruto decided to remove his weights and disappeared lightning fast with Santin, before reappearing above their opponent and unsheathing his katana, he let a maelstrom of wind surround it and grinned before releasing it towards the grass ninja, while Santin did another Kei's Haku no Jutsu, sending the ninja into the ground below. Uzumaki Shippurenden Naruto said as he landed on the ground and sheathed his sword. Ukuku very good Naruto-kun very good indeed, I have enjoyed our little bout, but I have business with Sasuke-kun. The grass ninja turned to Sasuke before extending his neck and biting him on the neck and banishing into the earth. Naruto turned to Sasuke who had fallen unconscious and picked him up before heading to the others and setting Sasuke beside Kiba and Akamaru and undoing the Jinjutsu on Sakura who fell to her knees and began to shake her head in order to get her bearings. Naruto motioned to Santin and his team and in a flash they had left the area. I know short chapter but it's two parts so they're Naya. Sorry. So very sorry for the very late update. Uzumaki Shipper and in Uzumaki Hurricane Barrage, again thanks to Raf Wolf Lover. Hayes Haku Wind Howl. He mate made their way closer to the tower, while planning to ambush a team that came to the tower. Naruto took the lead of the formation with Santin by his side and Shino and Hinata at his flanks. Naruto suddenly saw something at the edge of his vision and jumped backwards as his teammates followed suit. They were right to caution when they saw a dragon made of earth crash into the branch they were previously on. Doton. 
Doryu and in no Jutsu, who used it though was Naruto's thoughts as he scanned the surrounding area for his opponents. Six Genin jumped out of the bushes and surrounded them grinning. Teammate dropped into a defensive stance, and after a quick study of their opponent's headbands, they identified their attackers as Iwanin. So a couple of Kanoha Genin's A it's or lucky day we decided to team up against our opponents and make it to the next round, so hand over your scrolls, and we might let you live the let Iwanin said arrogantly. Naruto just made a few hand signals to his team, and they nodded after getting the message. With one last hand signal Naruto, Hinata, Shino and Santin split up each attacking two opponents, except for Santin who was assisting Naruto. But Shino. Shino engaged his opponents with his usual calculating finesse. One of the Iwanin flashed through hand signs while his partner charged straight toward Shino. Odin. Doryuudin the Iwanin yelled as an earth dragon appeared and shot several blasts at Shino. Shino threw three kunai at the charging nin, forcing him to dodge and back off, while using the bug shield jutsu, what's the Japanese translation for this, to block the earth blasts. Shino rushed forward after the nin who launched the jutsu, while having some of his bugs hide in the nearby bushes for a later purpose. Shino threw a punch at the Iwa nin, which easily connected sending the genin back a few feet. Shino jumped to the side to avoid the projectiles launched at him by the other ninja. Shino once again settled into a defensive position as the two regrouped and planned their next assault. Shino smirked behind his trench coat, it was time to enact his plan. All of a sudden a swarm of bugs appeared and covered the Iwa ninjas draining their chakra. Shino turned and went off to see if his teammates needed help, while his bugs finished draining his opponent's chakra. But Hinata. Hinata glared at her opponents who leered at her peveredly, is that a word? As they cracked their knuckles and walked forward slowly. Now now little girl why don't you just give up and come have some fun with us eh what do you say the first one asks. Hinata replied by dropping into the Jayuikan stance and waited for her opponents to attack her. The first nin smirked and charged at her hoping to take her out quickly. Oh I pity the fool. Hinata easily sidestepped him and sent a Jayuikan strike to his arm, closing a Tenketsu, sending him back cursing and glaring. His friend however was smarter and opted to use ranged attacks in the form of several kunai. Hinata easily dodged them which only infuriated him even more. As he went through some hand seals and shouted. Oten. Earth Needle Barrage no Jutsu dot, someone give me the translation please. At least a hundred earth needles sped towards Hinata from all sides, leaving no room to dodge. Hinata however performed Katen and sent the projectiles back towards the genin, killing one and almost incapacitating another. Hinata quickly killed the other one with a Jayuken strike to the heart. Hinata quickly ran off to find Shino and Naruto in case they needed help. But Naruto and Santin. Naruto, Santin and their two opponents stared each other down silently, they knew no words or taunts were needed and preferred to get right down to it. All three of them rushed forward flashing through seals before each shouted out their own jutsu. Hayes Haku. Otendoryu Enden. Otendoryu Heki. Duotin. Wind Wolf Attack. The four jutsus collided and when the dust settled it appeared to be a draw. Naruto again charged forward and drew his sword while sending chakra to it as the wind formed around it. The Iwan in were ready and flashed through more hand seals shouting. Oten door Uden. Oten. Earth spikes no jutsu, again translation please. Naruto easily cut through the missiles however the spikes forced him to slow down a bit. Naruto got in range and launched a flurry of slashes at the two ninjas at rapid pace. The ninjas barely dodged, getting small cuts and scratches here and there. One of the genin moved his hand and quickly knocked Windbreaker out of Naruto's hand. Naruto went after the genin as Santin attacked the other. Naruto attempted to punch the Iwan in, only to have him dodge and strike back. Naruto ducked and pressed the forward again fighting aggressively and exchanging blow for blow with his opponent. Naruto pressed forward once again. The Iwan in drew a kunai and charged again attacking mercilessly. Naruto fell back under his assault until he noticed something behind him something silver, his sword. Naruto backed up until his sword was directly below him before ducking under a swipe and grabbing his blade, before driving it into his opponent's heart killing him instantly. Turning he saw that Santin had finished his opponent as well. Naruto searched the bodies and upon finding an earth scroll, he and his teammates ran to the tower. The rookie nine, Guy's team, Yujito's team, Gara's team, and a team from Mist all stood in the arena as Hate called the first match. First round of the preliminaries is Uzumaki Naruto vs. Sabaku no Gara. Sabaku no Gara and Uzumaki Naruto please make your way to the ring for the first match, Hate yelled before coughing again. Naruto glanced over to Gara, whose face revealed no emotion, though if you looked into his eyes, you would find complete insanity and psychotic glee. Naruto knew he'd have to use every bit of skill he had to win this fight. His mind immediately began thinking of a strategy to use against the other Jinchuriki. The other Genin began to make their way to the balcony to observe the fight. Naruto turned and saw Hinata staring at him and without words conveyed what she felt. 
Naruto did the same and smiled at her before turning back to Gara, who was waiting patiently to begin. Once the genin had left the arena Naruto and Gara waited patiently for Hei to begin the match. Naruto reached for several kunai and shuriken from his pouch and held them at the ready position, still thinking about how to proceed with the match. Uzumaki Naruto vs Abaku no Gara Hajim. Naruto threw the kunai and shuriken before using the shuriken kunai cage bunch and no jutsu, turning a few kunai and shuriken into many. Gara, however, didn't move nor blink as the projectiles got closer and closer to him. A sand shield appeared from the gourd on his back and hardened, blocking the projectiles and flinging them aside. How on is that all you've got? Gara asked emotionlessly. Hardly Naruto replied also emotionally, okay he's got a sand shield that blocks attacks, but can it be used defensively? Who one way to find out? Naruto charged and using his style attacked in a blur trying to hit Gara through the shield with little success. Naruto jumped back and jumped up coming down towards Gara's head with an axe kick, only to have it blocked by the Suna no Tate. Naruto pushed off and spun around and punched at Gara although it failed miserably. Naruto back flipped away and readied himself for another assault. Gara sent a wave of sand towards Naruto and encircled him before letting it fall, smirking he awaited the blood that was to come. Santin who had been biding his time however, sped up behind Gara and attempted to slash him across the back, only to get blocked by the sand and thrown across the room. Naruto saw the sand begin to envelop him and closed his eyes, when he opened them instead of the normal sapphire blue, amber eyes with two tomo in each representing the Jakutsugan appeared. Naruto grabbed the handle of his sword and set back into a stance with the right foot in front of the left and while pressing the blade of windbreaker against the curve of the sheath. A and some of you know what's coming and if you don't well you'll soon find out he he David out. Bar was about to crush the meddling Akami when a loud cry rang out and his sand wall was cut in two. Gara turned towards Naruto and found him standing in the middle of his sand, with his katana out, it appeared that he had just finished a side swipe, however Gara knew something was different, his eyes were yellow, and the way he held his sword was a style he had never seen before. Up in the sidelines. The genin watched the battle in silent awe and a lot of jealousy, a and guess who, of the battle they saw before them, it was incredible, and it had barely begun. Hinata, Shino, Kurinai, and Kakashi knew what to expect however the others knew nothing and were awestruck. That boy has no chance against Gara. this fight won't go on much longer, said Kankiru as he watched the scene below him. They're wrong Naruto-kun is an excellent fighter, and if he's using his dejutsu and that sword style, gara Sen is in for a tough battle, Hinata countered. Kankiru snorted and turned back to watch the fight. But Naruto and Gara. Naruto slowly began walking towards Gara with his sword hanging loosely in his arm. He stopped within 10 feet and stared into Gara's eyes reading him like a book. After a minute Naruto turned to Santin and nodded his head Naruto pulled out a scroll and a paper with kanji on it, before adding chakra and tossing the paper at Santin, it hit Santin on the forehead and stuck before a poof of smoke enveloped him. When the smoke cleared in Santin's place was an almost complete replica of Naruto only with more wolf-like features. Naruto cut himself with a kunai and smeared it on the scroll before tossing it to Santin. With a pop ink and a brush as well as several runes appeared. Santin grabbed them and retreated to a nearby wall and began writing kanji on the wall. A and yes he's making preparations for a ceiling jutsu. Naruto nodded and turned his attention back to Gara, who was holding his hand out and was gathering his sand into his hand before it slowly formed into the shape of a zanpaktu, a and I think that's how it's spelled, Gara grinned maliciously before swinging his sword as if to test its durability. Tsuna no Yeba, I will kill you and feed mother your blood. Naruto raised the sword up above his head and waited him, I'll have to keep him occupied until Santin finishes the ceiling runes, his sand shield is still a problem however I think I know what to do. Gara let's kick it up a notch ok. Dot. Naruto began to discard his armor and weights one at a time, until there were several craters in the ground where his armor was. Naruto smirked before disappearing and reappearing behind Gara swinging his sword at the ground. Hide Mitsurugi Ryu Doryusen. A N translation flying heaven honorable sword style earth dragon flash. Windbreaker hit the ground and immediately afterwards the ground began to shake and crack and explode in Gara's direction, sending debris everywhere. Gara's sand shield blocked the debris. Gara charged Naruto blade at the ready. Their blades crossed and broke off as they exchanged blows with each other, Naruto jumped above Gara and brought his sword down shouting. Hide Mitsurugi Rai Rai Tsushisen. Flying Heaven Honorable Sword Style Dragon Hammer Flight Flash. The sand shield blocked the blade although it was blown away. Naruto put both hands on his blade and brought it upwards in an uppercut slash. Gara's defense didn't stand a chance and failed to completely block the attack. Naruto backed off a few feet and watched Gara closely looking for any sign of weakness. Gara stood there apparently uninjured when suddenly a deep cut appeared on his shoulder and began to bleed profusely. 
There were some gasps from the audience and several worried shouts of Gara from the Suna team, Gara looked at the wound and his eyes widened in terror. He dropped the Suna Yeba and clutched his head still screaming. The sand began to swirl around him violently. He staggered back while the sand still swarming around him began to form around his body and hardened. When it was finished there stood Gara with hardened sand covering his body resembling the form of a tanuki. A.N. remember what he looked like in the Anime when Naruto fought him right before he grew to the size of a mountain. No, he won't grow that big this time, this fight won't go on much longer four pages is quite enough for now. Naruto knew what was happening Gara was transforming into the Ichibi no Shukaku. Santon was almost finished with the runes. It was time to enact the final part of his plan. Naruto let wind began to form around his sword and rushed forward. Gara brought his claws down at Naruto's chest, attempting to cleave him in two. Naruto dodged and swung his sword across Gara's chest, with the added force of the wind sent him flying back. He slowly stood up and swung his arm releasing several Suna shuriken. Naruto cleaved the shuriken in two before putting his hand in a familiar cross-shaped seal, while shouting Cage Bunshin, no jutsu. Eight clones appeared beside Naruto, three clones attacked Gara head-on, while four went towards the ceiling circle, which was formed in the shape of a pentagram. Santin and the four clones each stood at a point on the pentagram and began applying chakra. Naruto tossed the last clone an object from his pack. The clone caught the ocarina and quickly began playing a melody. Gara began thrashing wildly at the sound staggering back and forth. Naruto ran forward after Gara, while the melody had his guard dropped. Hide Mitsurugi Ryuku Zuriasen Dot, An Flying Heaven Honorable Sword Style 9 Headed Dragon Flash. Naruto delivered nine strikes at such a speed not even Kakashi could see it with his Sharingan. Gara had no chance to counter and was sent flying back, directly into the middle of the seal. The seal glowed green before trapping Gara, making him immobile. Naruto sheathed his blade and ran forward towards Gara, performing fast seals and shouting Ninpu demonic sealing. His hand glowed green and slammed into Gara's chest. Gara howled in rage and pain as the sand receded into his gourd and he slipped into unconsciousness. Gara Tamari yelled from the stands. It's alright, Tamari san, he's fine, I've fixed his seal. Shukaku can no longer affect him, let him sleep. Tell him I would like to speak to him after the preliminaries. Damari nodded and grabbed her brother and jumped up to the balcony. Shousa Yuzumaki Naruto Hei called. Naruto gathered the rest of his armor and weights and proceeded up the balcony with Santon, who had transformed back into a wolf. He took up his place beside Hinata and kissed her on the cheek before staring back down to the arena. The board began going through the names until it stopped PN. Paddock Jin vs. Acheha Sasuke. No one saw that coming I bet. May Hikari thanks for the idea. Time for a poll who will win the fight. Jin. Or. Sasuke. The ocarina will I always like Taya's flute, so I decided to give Naruto ocarina that can affect the person's mind or infuriate or calm them. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.